He's muted. Oh yeah, we can't hear you, but we, we can see you. Well, he's not muted. Um, you're not muted. I think there is something wrong with your camera, with your microphone. I, I see a mute on his thing. Uh, I don't see a mute. Yeah, I, I, there is one on his, on the lower oh. left, I think. Oh, I don't see it either. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think he's connected to audio. Yeah. yeah huh. you... Okay, go go ahead, because okay. uh, if yeah, if Robert wants to talk, he won't be able to, so he has to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> It's a conspiracy. <laughs> Mary Lou Schultz. Here. Michael Von Neumann. Here. And Patricia Trouth. Here. Yay, Patricia. Welcome aboard. Hello. Yeah, Hello. welcome, Patricia. Yeah, thank you. I'm excited. Uh, okay. So we've got everybody except for Marty. Uh, let's move right along to oral communications. Amanda, do we have any speakers? I saw some emails and some public comments, but do we have any speakers tonight? Yes, sure, we do. We have three speakers. Okay. So I will go ahead and unmute you one by one. You'll have three minutes to address the commission. We have Gerald Kessler followed by Christine Schindler. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay, I would like to speak on behalf of the Melba Alliance for Safety and Healthy Environment team about the Staver project on Melba to build 31 homes, which is slated to tear down a grove of Torrey Pines, 200 trees, and a historical home built in 1934. This housing environmental nightmare based on the bonus density law, AB 2345, will be impacting the traffic on Melba, along with the three neighboring schools that are connected by Melba, which is already a nightmare pre-COVID. I see that you have a new subcommittee to deal with traffic issues, and I feel like someone directly impacted by these homes should be on it. We have people working on traffic options for Melba in our neighborhood group, which would be an ideal fit for it. I also would like to mention that the property should be preserved rather than built on. It has a unique ecosystem and rural land along with it, a, an adjacent horse farm and barn. I feel like the city should be assisting the neighbor neighboring community in preserving this property with grant money from federal government, parks and rec funds, or perhaps educating the neighborhood on how they could raise funds to preserve the property, rather than the legal options we are forced to use. This property is an ideal for additional space for the Boys and Girls Club garden, Oakcrest School, extra space for the STEM programs, additional space for the community center, or an annex for the botanical gardens. This property is not meant to be developed with 31 homes, creating all sorts of drainage issues and traffic nightmares. Please help us preserve this rural land and open space that we don't have in Encinitas. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, Commissioner Von Neumann has a question. Uh, real quick, uh, I didn't catch the name of the speaker. Oh, it's Gerald Ann Kessler. Kessler? K-E-S-S-L-E-R. Mm -hmm. It's Thank just my much. public service uh, address. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Next, we have Christine Schindler, followed by Scott Runmark. Christine, you should be all set. Yeah, this is Christine Schindler. I live in East Encinitas. And for the previous speaker, I would like to meet with you, if I may. Um, I ride that corridor all the time. I do safe routes to school uh, with the schools, and I would be um, interested in talking with you. So I'm not sure how to get you um, my contact information. I don't necessarily want to say it right now, but if someone, if Amanda, if you can put us in touch, that would be lovely. Um, I just wanted to talk today about Lake Drive. 
So I'm looking forward to all the updates, the name change, uh, the city traffic engineers updates, but um, I wanted to talk about Lake Drive and opportunity there. Um, I ride it often, I walk it uh, now and again, and I, I drive it uh, often as well. And I think it is prime for some active transportation uh, paint. Um, and I would ask uh, the city engineer and the traffic and safety commission to put this on a future agenda, looking at maybe putting advisory bike lanes here. And this may be the very first time that we've used advisory bike lanes in the city. And uh, it's probably too late because the development's already happened, but where Lake intersects uh, Birmingham um, I think that's a perfect location for a, a, tra a small traffic circle. Um, and um, I, know, I don't know if it's anything that's ever been considered. And I would imagine that whatever that development had to do um, has already taken place. So this may be a, um, a little uh, late in the comment. Um, and so that's it, Lake Drive, advisory bike lanes, if there's any um, uh, past or future conversation about a roundabout at that intersection with Birmingham. And then I just wanted to acknowledge um, Sergeant Rob and the Sheriff Department. It has been a heck of a year and a half and they have been busy and they have been front and center with all this craziness that we've been experiencing and I've recently reconnected uh, with several people at the uh, Sheriff's North County and met one of the new lieutenants, um, Lieutenant Norton. And I just wanna say thank you. Law enforcement is a, a hard gig in a usual time and it's particularly hard right now. So I just wanted to acknowledge and I'm glad you're here and I look forward to your updates. Uh, that's it, thanks so much. Great, thank you. Thank you, and our final speaker is Scott Runmark. All right, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Excellent, so thanks guys. Uh, my name's Scott Runmark. Um, I was referenced in an article by the Coast News in February of 2019, and the reporter was Carrie Blakely. And if you guys look up uh, that, you'll still see the article on the Coast News Group uh, website. And the title of it is City Takes No Action on Dangerous Intersection Near Capri Elementary. And so for reference, uh, this is the intersection of Capri and Burgundy, and you'll actually see a picture of it on that article when you look up online. Um, and interestingly enough, that intersection is about 50 feet from the entrance of Capri. Um, and I've been li I've lived here for eight years. Uh, I have a neighbor that's lived here for 20 years, and she said that she uh, complained about this intersection about 12 years ago when her child went to Capri. And it just astounded me that the city of Encinitas would not take seriously a dangerous intersection that close to an elementary school, 50 feet. Um, and so what happened after you guys got a little bad press is you guys did a crosswalk. And I know one, I know a couple of you folks are probably aware of that. The crosswalk, unfortunately, has not solved the problem. Um, so I'll paint a scenario for you because I, I think, you know, part of your guys' uh, job is hopefully getting out in the field. If, if you can come to this intersection at 745 in the morning, you will be astounded at how dangerous it is. And the vast majority of the people driving recklessly, unfortunately, are the parents, which is really unbelievable, uh, you know, as a parent myself. So what happens is people queue up for about 20 minutes to drop their kids off in the morning. And you know how it is when you're late for work, you're anxious, you're annoyed that you've been waiting. They finally drop their kids off at the front of Capri. They exit and then they start heading westbound on Capri, which is a big hill. There's about a 15% grade. And this hill goes straight downhill to this intersection in question. And unfortunately, what's happening is people avoid eye contact at this crosswalk, which is just, again, unbelievable when you have a six, eight, nine-year-old kid waiting there, right? 
um, they encroach on the on the crosswalk as kids are walking across. This has happened to me and my two daughters uh, about five times just in the last three months. It's it's a it's it's just it's unbelievable how reckless people will drive, uh, especially parents around little kids, and it, it's maddening. And so I, I've contacted the Coast News again. I'm going to contact the Union Tribune, the Advocate, the Patch. Anybody and everybody I can talk to to address this. So I wanted to give you guys a heads up. So if a reporter reaches out that we have a game plan in place um, and the game plan is we, we're going to have to put a four way stop there stop sign. There's just no other way that we can think about it. We tried to get uh, speed bumps and I believe there was a, a, a test you guys came out and reviewed. I think you do a test to see if speed bumps are appropriate. And evidently uh, the test, which was done just about a month ago or the evaluation proved that speed bumps were not necessary. So they were not approved. So um, we're gonna have a ton of parents on the next um, uh, call with you guys next month. You're gonna get a lot of correspondence and a lot of press on this. And uh, I really hope you guys can help because this is really dangerous and uh, it's a big liability for the city based off all the correspondence and all the, the people going back a decade being worried about this intersection. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, Amanda, any more speakers or was that it? That was our final speaker. Okay, um, commissioners, any comments or questions on the speakers or do we want to wait until we get to Commissioner's Corner and the follow-up blog to uh, talk about those three items that were just raised. I think we usually wait until the end. Uh, Commissioner Von Neumann. Oh, you're muted. I will address them uh, during Commissioner Corner. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's just do that. I think that's been our standard practice just want to let those three speakers know as right. i did on our last meeting that um we don't just listen to you and then completely ignore it we do discuss this at the end of the meeting so um unfortunately that usually takes some time uh hopefully not tonight but we will be discussing those items that you raised uh okay moving on to item five uh five a san diego county sheriff's update on traffic in the city of encinitas yeah, Rob Siegfried, Sergeant with the North Coastal Station. Uh, we're out in full force now, now that COVID uh, is ending. And uh, we have been doing a lot of enforcement with uh, bicycles, and, including e-bikes. And uh, we did two separate details down at the beach along the 101 um, in the past two months, where we wrote approximately uh, 80 to 90 tickets on two, two days. And those were mostly uh, groups of cyclists, your professional road bikers that don't obey any stop signs or, or signal lights. So they received a bunch of tickets and that was paid for by uh, the Office of Traffic Safety, a grant. So it didn't come out of our pocket, it came out of the state. Um, we've been working with uh, uh, the schools and the YMCA, and we've received lots of complaints regarding e-bikes. Um, I've instructed my guys, the motors and our traffic cars to be out there uh, to start doing enforcement if we see violations. Um, I don't know how many tickets we've written for that, but mainly we started out with uh, education. And I know Christine Schindler has been working with the schools and our uh, crime prevention specialists, Gary and Jonathan, and in order to uh, get some education out there at the schools. So Christine's been helping out with that. Um, I don't know, South Coast 101 with the speed limit change. I have received some uh, uh, extra extra uh, uh, patrol requests down that area. And uh, we were just out there just a few days ago uh, writing tickets in the morning. And then uh, also on a Rancho, uh, North Rancho Santa Fe Road at the stop signs. We've been receiving requests for stop sign runners there. So we've been out there in full force also. Anybody have any questions? Commissioners, any questions? Thank you, Rob. Welcome. Uh, I, I do. Yep. I, Commissioner, Commissioner Von, Von Neumann. Neumann. Yeah. 
Rob, uh, uh, you said that uh, you gave 80 tickets to cyclists. Uh -huh. how, many t how many tickets, speeding tickets, have you given to motorists? Uh, I don't know. It, I'd have to I'd have to pull their their stats, but I, I hear them out there because what happens is I I know they're out there because I hear them on the radio, and they they put themselves out on traffic enforcement there, and they're they'll they'll go two or three motors out there at a time, and they'll they'll hit it for about an hour or two, and then they they move on because then word gets out that they're out there, and then they'll they'll usually try to come back um like a couple days later, or the following week and follow up there when we get complaints. Okay, I, 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 I hope there's a lot of uh, speeding tickets being given out for motorists. Uh, and yeah, a lot of bicyclists may not follow stop signs and things like that, but uh, I think speeding motorists are more of a danger to pedestrians and other people than uh, bicyclists not stopping at stop signs. But I, I wanted to ask, also I wanted to ask you, what, what do you, in your professional opinion, do you think are the major areas of problems in Encinitas as far as vehicle speeds? Uh, mainly we, we, we get, uh, we get complaints on the 101 regarding uh, people almost getting hit and struck. And then we do get some residential areas where we'll receive complaints and we get those all over the city. I get those on North, uh, Rancho State, Rancho Santa Fe Road. I get a lot of complaints over there from a lot of residents. They go up the, usually it's an email that goes through the city complaining and it ends up with my captain's email and then it gets forwarded to me. But yeah, I agree with you on the vehicles. The reason we were out there doing the cyclists was the city. It was one, it was again, one of those emails that went up, went up the chain, ended up on my desk requesting enforcement down there because I guess it was just out of control. So uh, we normally don't like to go out and do bike enforcement because most, uh, most bicyclists aren't carrying ID. We have to believe who they say they are when they tell us. And, and usually the cyclists aren't happy. So the reason we were out there was because the city requested us to be out there for that. And that's why we, we did two details. Now we're getting a lot of complaints regarding all these kids stacking up at the 7-Eleven on D. Um, hogging up all the parking lot, including handicap zones. So we've been cracking down on that also. And that's why uh, Christine Schindler has been getting involved with the school education. Well, I, I, uh, Commissioner Von Neumann here again. I want to thank you for enforcing the traffic laws for bicycles as well as automobiles. As, as a hardcore bicycle rider myself, it just burns my shorts when I see people running through stop bicyclists running through stop signs and stoplights so i'm in full support of ticketing people like that um also has there been any difference uh in the intersections there where the red light cameras have been removed have you noticed any issues with that no i i haven't and i approve every traffic accident report that gets filed with the station unless i'm on vacation and i haven't seen any at those locations like Lucadia, right. Encinitas Boulevard, I haven't noticed any uh, any significant ones. So okay. I, I wouldn't say there has there has there there has not been an increase at all that I've noticed personally. Okay, all right. I know that was a concern when there was being considered to be taken out. So yeah. thank you yes. for that. You're thank welcome. you for thank you for all your work and thank you to the deputies. Uh, every time I ride by, uh, deputies giving out speeding tickets, I. Uh, I thank them uh, vocally and with a thumbs up. So they appreciate you. they appreciate that because they definitely uh, don't get enough support sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Keep keep at it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Commissioner von Neumann. Commissioner Prendergast. Yes. Thank you, um, Rob. I also appreciate all your efforts and your team too. I was just curious if. Um, as part of reports, do we have statistics that came in just of where the tickets were given in the city and or traffic accidents just on a monthly basis, just to keep note of where the, um, to where the callers called in and where the accidents are or, or where things are maybe picking up during the summertime. Yeah, they do do a, uh, our, our uh, crime analysts will, will plug in like a high accident rate of certain areas. I could start doing that. I could get them to do the poll the monthly, at least for the previous month and let you know where the, where the accidents have been the top the top 10 i, I could do that 
That'd be great. I think we probably all know where they are, but it's 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 good to to see maybe the bottom four or five start to change a little bit. We all know the heavy trafficked areas. Uh, we've been hearing a lot of conversations about La Costa Avenue going down to where the new hotel is. And now that the hotel is opened um, right there at the north end of the city adjacent to Carlsbad, you know, we might see a few more um, situations. So uh, just helpful just to have a, a base knowledge of, of how things are changing. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And to speak to that, to that uh, intersection there, I haven't noticed any increase there at all. Oh, good. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other commissioners have questions for Rob before we let him go? <laughs> hey, Glenn Johnson here. Yes, Commissioner Johnson. Uh, uh, I ha hear anecdotal comments that the e-bikes uh, are sometimes out of control because of underage riders who don't apparently even understand what the uh, laws are. Uh, are those being enforced or ignored? No, so, you know, when one kid gets one of these bikes, and I've noticed the other, another kid will get the same exact model of bike. So I think when one kid gets a bike, they tell their parents, their parents just buy them a bike, and then they're all out there riding double and triple on the bike, and uh, no helmet, some of them, but uh, it's, been, it's been received pretty well. We started out with just education. And uh, we're just starting to crack down now and starting to issue citations. I don't have a number of citations because we really uh, just started the enforcement phase last week. Yeah, uh, if they don't have ID and appear to be uh, uh, too young for, for doing this, can you just impound their vehicle and let them come into the office and uh, sort this out? Yeah, that's something we're looking at if we can impound because on a normal bike stop, we don't impound bicycles. So we're looking into the legal ramifications. If we can even do that, seize it as evidence in a case. We really don't want to do that unless we have like repeat offenders. So uh, right now we're not doing that. We're just writing the ticket and leaving it as is. The issue with these e-bikes is there's so many different class of e-bikes. Uh, if they go over 28 miles per hour, then they need to have a driver's license and all these other rules. And it, it gets kind of confusing. And uh, for the deputy, even like I, you don't know what kind of bike this is until you stop them and look up the model. If you're familiar with the model and how fast these things are allowed to go and what the rules are for them. But yeah, I agree that they don't know the rules of the road. A lot of these kids are very young, like 13, 14 year olds out riding the streets. So it can get dangerous. Yeah, that's that's my fear is that we're going to have to wait until a couple of them get nailed uh, uh, and buried. Uh, and I'd like to I'd like to not have funerals. Uh, it seems like the classes of e-bikes that are cheap, uh, low cost ones, are the uh, first two classes, and they're limited to twenty miles an hour. Uh, so I don't know how uh, strictly that's uh, enforced. Yeah, well, it does get confusing with the different classes. So uh, as far as I know, as long as they're wearing a helmet and they're following the rules of the road, they're allowed to ride them. So, yes. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Prendergast. One last question, Rob. Are your are your peer groups in Poway or Pacific Beach to and San Diego Police Department have anybody established any policies that we should consider here in Encinitas or your friends in Carlsbad, maybe it's the beach communities that might see uh, this, or maybe it's all over town or the county. No, I haven't. I haven't uh, consulted with any other. Uh, nearby stations or sister stations, Carlsbad or Poway. Um, but we do have our own traffic meetings monthly throughout the county when we discuss uh, you know, issues that are occurring. I'll, I'll have to check on our next meeting next month and uh, see if anyone else has experienced what we're, what we're experiencing. And I can tell you that when I used to work in Imperial Beach for many years, uh, we had a problem with bikes riding on the wrong side of the road, et cetera, et cetera, not riding on the sidewalks not following rules and mainly because that's, that's a beach town and same with Encinitas. It's a beach town. So everybody wants to be out, you know, on, on a bike. So right. 
the more of the inland, you don't see it as much, like Poway, San Marcos, because there's nowhere really to go. You're too far from the beach. Got it. Well, maybe Solana Beach has had some issues, and you know, as you troll down to Del Mar, maybe um, it'd be great if, the, if there's other programs other than the, the education program that are are being implemented because it's going to be a busy summer. I think um, we've all experienced from reading our next door sites. Everybody's complaining about the e-bites and the kids and going very fast and and not understanding the rules of the road. And it's it's tough when you're 13, you haven't taken a driver's ed class. How are you going to know? Um, so, but you're right. It'd be it's going to be a situation we all have to pay attention to going forward. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. Yeah, and, and I think uh, our, our next agenda item 5B is giving uh, updates, subcommittee updates. So I think that's a good uh, segue. I'll just give a really quick update. We had sort of formed a joint ad hoc subcommittee uh, with the Parks and Rec Commission. And I'm not sure how many of you all saw the city sent out like a, a press release or a news release or something uh, earlier this month about e-bike education and outreach and they talked about what the sheriff's department is doing, collaborating with local schools, what you just mentioned, Rob, uh, working with Christine. Uh, they talked about the San Diego County Bike Coalition partnering up with the Parks and Rec uh, Department or something like that to do a video that's going to come out this summer that's supposed to, you know, teach people, mostly mostly younger teenagers, um, how to ride an e-bike and the rules of the road and all that kind of stuff. So there's some things that are starting, uh, starting to gain traction to address these concerns. Um, and, and Rob, thanks for summarizing those things that you're doing. And I, I continue, you know, I see, I see this every day and you guys have heard me talk about this before, you know, overall, it's a very good thing that, that these teenagers have a way of getting around a newfound independence that they didn't have before. But some of these kids are just out there for mischief and, um, you know, all it takes is a call to one of their parents in front of the other 25 kids on their bikes, and you're going to have a huge impact on, they know that they're doing something wrong, usually, when they're really getting into trouble. Um, and it's, it has nothing to do with speed. It has to do with the stuff that they're doing that they access uh, via e-bike. They all huddle up and get into something somewhere. <laughs> So anyway, uh, I, I'm happy to hear that you guys are, are on top of this and starting to enforce it. Um, and yeah, hopefully everybody will just follow the rules of the road and we'll have a, a ton of e-bikes out there, but everybody's uh, being safe about it. So that's that's my quick um, subcommittee update on, uh, on e-bike education and outreach. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, do you wanna give an update uh, on the house or on the circulation element update? Uh, the circulation element. I've done a lot of reading here. I don't have much to report. However, uh, I did uh, uh, approach Jennifer Gates and she's agreed to come and uh, give us an update on it. Uh, I think this commission with uh, representatives from all five of our communities uh, and the uh, function of the commission uh, can have a strong advisory role and help, uh, help us get a new uh, Mobility element, I think it's being called. And I'd like to hear from Jennifer Gates on this. Okay. Um, all right, thank you, Glenn. Uh, commissioners, any questions on, on those two updates? And if not, I wanna let, uh, I wanna let, let Rob go unless you wanna stick around and listen to the rest of our discussion. Or Abe, if, if you wanted to have Rob for any of the rest of this, I just, we usually forget and after two hours, we're like, oh shit. Rob's still uh, <laughs> listening to us. So anything else we need Rob for? No. no thank you. Thank you, Rob. Okay. Thank, All right. thank you for the update. Good night. Have a good night. Bye. Um, okay. It looks like uh, that's another good segue, uh, Glenn. We've got item 5C, which is an update uh, on the mobility element from Jennifer Gates. Maybe. I'm here. <laughs> oh, hey, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Good. So I am going to share a PowerPoint and introduce our planner, Ethan. And 
All right. So you guys see that PowerPoint? Yes. Yes. All right. I'm going to get you guys organized on my screen here so I can see all your faces. <laughs> All right. Well, good evening. Um, so this is my first presentation to the Traffic and Public Safety Commission. I did participate in the background um, when you guys heard from Jeff Blogaman on the Cross Connect um, last year. Um, so tonight, um, again, I'm Jennifer Gates, and I'm the principal planner for the city of Encinitas, and I um, head up our long range planning and housing division at the Development Services Department. And tonight, Evan Jennack will be presenting the mobility um, element update, and he is serving as kind of the main contact um, for this project. Um, we are doing a lot of projects, as you know, and so he's going to present um, on the mobility element update, what we've, um, where we're at right now, and the next steps. Um, you know, just to bring everybody up to speed, um, we did hire WSP to be the main project consultant. And then Fair and Pierce, KTUNA and Recon are all serving as sub consultants on this project. Um, but I am gonna go ahead and let Evan kick it off and he was gonna give a presentation. And then at the end of that, we'll take your questions and um, any comments that you have. So Evan, you wanna go ahead and... Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. Sure. And good evening, Traffic and Public and Safety Commission. Um, Traffic and Public Safety Commission, sorry. Nice to meet you all. I'm Evan Jednak, project planner. So the mobility element, it was previously known as a circulation element. It's a section of the city's general plan that identifies a multimodal transportation network to serve the community's needs. The element will analyze all of the current available transportation options in order to identify a comprehensive network that will serve the community in the future. So the last comprehensive update to the element was in 1989, when obviously the population was much lower and transportation options were very different. Since then, the city has grown and the transportation options continue to expand. So the mobility element identifies, um, one, a safe, efficient, and adequate circulation system that responds to the transportation and infrastructure needs of all modes and users including drivers, cyclists, pedestrians, transit users, and rail users. It identifies the location of existing and future transportation needs in the city. It'll identify long-term goals and policies for community mobility over the next 30 years, and also strategies to reduce vehicle speed, increase driver attention, and protect vulnerable users on local streets, and to reduce overall vehicle miles traveled. Uh, next slide, please. So there are four main project components, the primary portions being the mobility element update and the corresponding environmental impact report. A third project component is the mode share and mode shift, which involves conducting an existing mode share analysis to determine baseline transportation mode use for the city and development of mode shift targets and goals. There is a separate but related project component, which is the implementation plan for SB 743, which will not be covered in the presentation tonight, but to touch very briefly on it in case um, you all are not aware, uh, SB 743 eliminates the road level of service as a CEQA metric and requires vehicle miles traveled as the new metric for transportation impact analysis. So SB 743 and the mobility element are mostly independent, but they're similar. And so they're both being processed under this larger project together. And so mobility element goals should be consistent with SB 743 goals. Next slide, please. So there are three project phases. The first phase is the strategy, visioning, and existing conditions phase. This will generally take place in the year 2021 and will result in an outline of the mobility element goals and an existing conditions analysis. Uh, the second phase is network development and analysis, which will occur in early 2022. This phase will result in the development of a mobility network with alternatives identified and then the preferred networks. The third and final phase is the mobility element network selection and the environmental impact report, which will occur from mid 2022 to 2023. Um, 
This phase will complete the environmental documentation and involve final presentations and approvals. And so as noted towards the top of this graphic, each phase includes a public outreach portion, which we will uh, touch on in later slides here. Next slide. So phase one of the project is the strategy visioning and existing conditions analysis phase. Um, this foundational phase involves a data and literature review, which WSP is currently working on, and also includes transportation modeling, verification, and an existing conditions analysis. Uh, by the conclusion of this phase, the city intends to develop a mobility toolkit, um, which could include items like a network of complete streets, an electric vehicle charging facility strategy, designation of mobility hubs, et cetera. Next slide. Phase two of the project will build off the foundation established in the existing conditions phase and focus on mode shift goal setting as well as further community and stakeholder engagement. Uh, the project team will refine the draft goals, policies, and programs that were the result of community engagement in phase one and apply them to developing three circulation network alternatives. The network alternatives may include similar concepts, but with different levels of implementation costs corresponding to different proposed multimodal roadway cross sections. Uh, the project team will next uh, analyze the three network alternatives using multimodal metrics. Based on this technical analysis and community input, the team will select the preferred network. The next slide, please. So phase two deliverables include maps and project lists for the three proposed circulation networks. It'll include model output data, alternative evaluation results, cross sections for key roadway segments, and a citywide map of all street classifications. The project will develop a range of roadway types throughout the city that can support a variety of needs, including areas that may support transit, biking, and walking more frequently. This will include a review of the current classification system and recommended updates based on project goals and policies, applicable laws and regulations, and public input. Uh, based on the network alternatives and community input, the city will select the preferred uh, mobility network. So shown on this slide are factors that can impact the network including population, housing, and employment density up on top. On the bottom, we have future land use and then key destinations and routes. Next slide. Phase three is the environmental compliance portion. Uh, the technical analysis completed during phase two will serve as the basis for the transportation analysis in the EIR. The city proposes to prepare uh, what's called a focused programmatic EIR that addresses key resource areas that may be affected by the element update. The consultant team will assist the city through developing a traffic model and completing a VMT-based CEQA analysis to analyze the impacts of the element update. Next slide. So public outreach and engagement will be a primary focus of the element update and outreach will occur throughout the entirety of the project timeline in a number of different forms, including those listed here. So the project website, the city has established um, a project webpage within our website, which includes links to important documents, and importantly, a place to sign up for project email alerts. Staff has been encouraging all interested residents to sign up for email alerts. Promotional materials, the city is currently developing materials for digital distribution and arranging mailing services for citywide mailers to encourage participation in the workshops and other activities listed below. Community workshops, um, the project scope calls for two community workshops, which will be the largest of the outreach events. The first community event will be conducted on August 3rd, 2021, and will cover project goals present a review of the existing conditions in the city and generally gather ideas and input for potential project goals and policies. So this workshop will include six breakout rooms, one for each community, plus a Span Spanish language room with an interpreter. And their workshop will be recorded and included on the project webpage for later reference. Second workshop will occur early 2022 and will generally follow the same format of the first, but will focus more on the proposed network alternatives. 
uh, pop-up outreach, another form, the city will plan and conduct pop-up outreach events at community locations, which likely include a farmer's market, et cetera, things like that. Also office hours for members of the public who may not have access to a computer, a member of the project team will be available for designated office hours during which the community may call. Next slide. So as part of the mobility element update, the city is looking forward to consolidating the progressive policies from our various strategic community and neighborhood plans, uh, such as the climate action plan, active transportation plan, rail corridor vision study, cross connect, et cetera, into one cohesive citywide framework. Um, so the, the climate action plan includes goals for reducing vehicle miles traveled, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, Transport, active transportation plan encourages a mode shift to bike, ped, and other non-vehicular modes. And the rail corridor vision study and cross-connect implementation plans identify locations where pedestrian and bicycle access across train tracks could be installed or improved. Uh, finally, the modal alternatives plan, that's the implementation portion of the active transportation plan, um, which will be a running concurrently with this mobility element update and we'll have a later slide on that that'll give a bit more detail. Next slide. So shown here is a draft project schedule with opportunities for involvement highlighted. So currently spring 2021 project kickoff in existing conditions analysis. This is underway now. We're kind of moving into summer 21 here. Um, so the public engagement activities to educate, gather input on the goals, policies, and existing conditions. Again, August 3rd, first public outreach workshop. Uh, later on this year, fall 2021, will be development of the draft transportation networks. Moving into uh, next winter, 21-22, will be the second um, large public outreach event to gather input on the draft transportation networks. Spring sun, and summer of 2022 will be the analysis of draft transportation networks, selection of a preferred network and preparation of the environmental analyses. Fall 22 is their public review of the draft mobility element and the EIR. And that moves us into um, the goal for the, the finish of the project is winter 22, 23. You know, hopefully we'll finish before 23. Um, City Council, you know, approval of the final element and the EIR will be the last step. Uh, next slide. So the next steps of the mobility element are outlined here. Uh, as noted, once more, uh, August 3rd, 6 p.m., that's the first public outreach meeting. Um, tell everyone you know. Um, but also going on now, completion of data and literature reviews are currently underway by WSP. Um, we're developing the draft goals, or, or actually should say development of the draft goals will occur um, and be based primarily on the public input received at the first community outreach meeting. Um, and then also the mobility element document outline and existing conditions analyses are currently being developed, the framework of those. Next slide, please. So as I, I touched on before, the modal alternatives project, the map. So this is a project that's going to be running concurrently to the mobility element here. And it's the implementation plan for the ATP. So as many of you may know, the ATP was approved in 2018. Um, it did not include an implementation plan portion. So that's what this is. And the map is funded by a Caltrans grant. Um, anticipated project kickoff is August of this year. And, and this project will do the following. It's gonna develop a prioritized list of the community's bike and ped projects based on a variety of safety, connectivity, and use demand factors. It'll also provide detailed site plans and fact sheets for each project, making the prioritized projects ready for capital grant funding. The project will develop 35 concept plans total with five concept plans for each community and 10 citywide projects. The map will have its own public engagement process um, and will try to focus on low income and disadvantaged communities. And the map will 
looks to identify strategies to integrate new technologies with the bike share, ride share, autonomous vehicle requirements. It will hopefully set the stage for the rapid installation of on-street bike, e-bike, and pedestrian facilities. So the map will be integrated with the mobility element wherever feasible. For example, the random survey portion of the map will influence the goals and policies of the mobility element. The mode shift and network development portions of the element will then influence the prioritization of the map project. So wherever we can, we're hoping to integrate the two. Next slide. And this concludes the staff presentation. So we're here to answer any questions and encourage discussion. Thanks. All right, thank you, Evan. Uh, commissioners, questions? Hope that was helpful. And that's what you guys were looking for, some more information. Um, I did want to touch on, we will be coming back on you know a regular basis to um, keep you guys up to date on this project as well as the map project. Um, and then Abe is a member of our team for both projects as well. So he will be up to speed um, and as, probably more than he wants to be <laughs> on a planning project. But I need his uh, knowledge on uh, what we're currently working on to make sure that that information is the most up to date as possible for our consultants. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Okay, uh, I probably have a number of comments here. Uh, I start off by saying we need to educate ourselves and the community on what the change from level of service to DMT means because uh, on a, on a very small scale basis, level of service can tell us where the uh, problem intersections are and where the uh, really serious traffic jam points are. And I don't know how this interfaces with the, the VMT standard. Uh, I, I, I can see that the VMT works for people who travel a longer distance. It's kind of state imposed and it's like almost the connection between uh, cities and communities. So uh, we probably need some very, very good uh, information on this for us and for the citizens. This is this is a the city traffic engineer, um, chair. If I may, uh, our our current scope, the way the commission operates, uh, this change from uh, CEQA's metric of um, LOS going to VMT, um, if I'm honest, will have a very minimal impact on our monthly activities and our um, tasks that we have undertaken these past few years that I've been around. Um, however, I'll be more than happy to bring a um, non-agenda presentation uh, item to the commission, uh, spend some time on this. We can go over how it was and what it will be and what we will be expecting from the consultant to provide us and what this whole SB 743, you know, why it happened and what the goal was and what it entails, if that's uh, something that the commission is interested in. Yeah, th thank you, Abe. I, I think what Glenn, I, and Glenn, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think his comment was more, um, you know, just directed at the process and as part of this mobility element update, it would be good for the city to educate the public, not necessarily us commissioners, on what the difference is between VMT and level of service, what SB 743 is. Is that what you were getting at, Commissioner Johnson? Yes, and, and also some of our planning uh, is based on uh, new developments, imposing more traffic and degrading the level of service and hence uh, give us some LOS then gives our planning department some teeth to reduce the scope of some projects. And I don't know what VMT will do for this. We can also prepare, you know, talk about preparing um, handouts around some of these, you know, staff can prepare some handouts around some of these topics for the community to understand. It's, it's not easy to understand the difference unless you're in it a lot on a daily basis. Um, this is not my uh, 
This is why we're getting a mobility planner also to help us. So, um, it's, it's not easy for me even. So um, I think that's something that we can do. We are looking to do more community education over lots of different topics. And this could be one of those topics too. Okay. Yep. Does anyone else have any more comments before I fire, fire my second shot? Before what? What? Uh, okay. Uh, I have a quick comment while you're thinking about it. I, I'm excited that there is going to be a mobility planner. I know Elena Thompson has been telling us we need one for years now, and I, I, I support what you're doing. I When I hear that you're looking very carefully at how to reduce vehicle traffic and increase other ways of transportation, I get excited. And I think having a lot of community input, and I've noted that your first meeting is in August of this year. I think that's a real important step. So thank you very much. Commissioner Johnson, you got, you, you've got you got some more, right? Okay. Uh, uh, the next thing I notice is that unlike other cities where perhaps uh, one plan covers the whole city, Encinitas uh, residents think this uh, city consists of the five founding communities uh, with some other things tacked on. So, you know, with new developments, it gives kind of uh, why is Encinitas Ranch in Lucadia instead of uh, uh, new Encinitas? But uh, the question is uh, what might be appropriate in one uh, of our communities might not be appropriate in another one of our communities. And I'm looking to see a, a plan that tailors itself to our communities so that our residents can uh, say, yes, that's the way things are in Lucadia. And uh, our other residents can say, yes, that's the way things are in uh, Olivenheim. So we are gonna focus the first community engagement will divide by community. Um, we're also discussing maybe depending on the timing and the full agenda we haven't done yet, but looking at the communities having breakouts and then coming back together and then breaking out by topic because we do know we recognize also that individuals have different interests sometimes around mobility and some may have more interest in um, the bike um, pedestrian routes versus, you know, traffic circulation. So there's different topics that we could potentially break out, but we're definitely focusing on the community first. Um, but we also need to remember that it is a, a citywide circulation system. Um, it just may be that what you're talking about is maybe um, the actual um, cross sections of some streets may lend themselves in certain communities to look a little different. I, I get what you're saying. Uh, my, my observation here, and I've only been here since, for, since uh, for about 38 years, uh, is that Encinitas is like an island. It's uh, surrounded on uh, uh, three sides by water. Uh, there's a lagoon to the south, there's an ocean to the north, there's another lagoon to the, uh, oh, to the north, the ocean west of it, isn't it? And then Escondido Creek kind of uh, creates the fourth side of our island. So the transportation systems in and out of town are, are severely constrained by uh, 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 bodies of water. And then, of course, we have Interstate 5 and the uh, railroad that provide uh, traffic between uh, our city and other cities. And uh, so I, I, I think we have, have we need a plan that talks about, trans, about transportation both between Encinitas and other cities, as well as between our communities, which uh, are kind of separated by natural barriers. Okay. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Any other commissioners have comments? Commissioner Von Neumann. Commissioner Von Neumann here. Uh, Evan, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure meeting you. Um, let's see, I wrote down a few things. Um, I, I wanna build on one, one comment uh, and then I have some questions but build on a comment that Glenn just made. Uh, 
I believe, and I, and I think I'm not alone, that one of the biggest impacts on our community and whatever our future plans are, are travelers using our community, get, going through our community to get to like I-5, impacting streets like Lucadia Boulevard, uh, La Costa, uh, Encinitas Boulevard, Manchester, et cetera, who they're from other communities like Carlsbad, San Marcos, uh, San Alijo. And I would hope during this whole process that there is an acknowledgement and an awareness by the people involved in this process that whatever impact those people have on our community, I would hope that it is not uh, a, pr uh, a primary concern for people. In other words, I want whatever thoughts and ideas about circulation element in Encinitas to be focused on Encinitas residents and not on the people coming from other communities, going through our community to get somewhere else. And I think that, you know, the, the, uh, the amount of traffic and everything is because of that. So I, I hope there's an awareness and acknowledgement in this process that that needs those people, while it's important to be good neighbors, primarily the, our primary concern is how do we make Encinitas safer for our residents, whether they're in cars, on foot, or on bicycles. Um, so that, that, that's one comment. And regarding the existing conditions analysis, who is involved in, the, in this first analysis? Are there any basic private residents, citizens involved in this analysis? Or is this all WSP uh, and city staff? So the community engagement will be gathering information, but as far as existing conditions analysis, it's looking at like traffic counts and things like that that kind of information, um, land use, you know, all the things that we kind of pointed out in that one map. Um, but of course the community will have an opportunity to um, provide their um, input in the process. And because I think that's what you're you're getting to as far as existing conditions and trouble spots and, you know, areas of concern. Um, okay, okay. So, so the existing conditions analysis is being done Primarily by professional staff right. and uh, it's about consultants. It's about the data okay. and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, has anyone on our city staff been involved in a circulation mobility element update before? I do not believe that anybody has. I don't think Abe has either. Right. Okay. Abe? It's. It, it, I'm sure it'll be a fun experience. Um, <laughs> But our consultants and have, so that's what's key. <laughs> I, I, I hope so, yeah. Um, and then, like, this is a long process, and there are so many uh, immediate needs and concerns right now that, you know, I, I, think, I think everyone needs to be aware of the fact that those immediate concerns and awarenesses are going to be coming up over and over and over again before this is being, you know, before this is done. So the city is still going to have to address those up, you know, those, those issues that come up like Capri school, the traffic around Capri school and all. So uh, I, I wish the process wasn't so long, but I guess that's par for the course. But uh, I look forward, I look forward to seeing what comes of this. Uh, I look forward to being involved and being uh, kept aware of everything. And uh, I wish it hadn't been, what, 30 years since our last one. <laughs> so thank you very much for all your work and you're gonna be doing a lot of work, so thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Von Neumann. Other commissioners, comments, questions? Uh, Commissioner Prendergast, and then we'll go back to Commissioner Johnson. Um, yes, thank you very much, Evan uh, and Jennifer. Quick question. 
is as part of this process is the staff and or consultants meeting with our neighbors at Carlsbad and Solana Beach. Again, uh, Commissioner Von Neumann mentioned, you know, our neighbors to the north and, and south of us, but clearly we don't want to create an element that stops or dead ends basically at the city's borders. So I'm just hoping that um, that that's taken into consideration and there is somebody reaching out to our neighbors to make sure that when we complete our plan, it connects with uh, our neighbors to the north and south and you know possibly to the east and the county and Rancho Santa Fe too. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Oh, let's see, where was I? Uh, what, I what I'd like to see from today's meeting is to see the slides put on the city's website so that we can refer the citizens to it, if that's appropriate at this stage. And uh, uh, I don't know how much dialogue we can have here between the, the commission and its members and the uh, city staff and the uh, consultants, but I think the more the better. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Trout. Yes, I, uh, I was just uh, wondering, will the workshop be in in-person or is it gonna be virtual? But still to be determined um, right now, because of when we developed the scope, it was identified to be um, virtual. Um, so we're still waiting on the guidance. So as we know, tomorrow things change and then we just, we still don't know what that looks like um, and we need to advertise. So I'm at this point where it's like, uh, so what we're gonna do is send a citywide um, postcard potentially. I'm trying to figure out uh, how to do this best with the map program coming up too. I don't want to inundate people with information. I'm trying to condense it um, and have people directed to our webpage in which we'll provide more information as well as get people to sign up for the updates so that we can get them the information on the workshop. And they'll either have a registration for the virtual or it'll be in person. But regardless, there will be opportunities for a month to participate. So they'll be able to see the information that's being provided in whichever format that is and be able to continue to provide feedback during that time period. So it's not a, a one time, you know, participation. You can, you can watch it later or learn more about it later and then participate. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Prendergast. <laughs> lots of, lots of questions tonight. Um, in Evan's presentation, there was a map, um, a slide that showed future development and uh, future densification. Clearly the housing element update um, showed densification along Manchester uh, and Cardiff and Lucadia. So uh, it's really more of a, a rhetorical question to, to Evan and Jennifer. Um, I'm assuming that as part of your process, you are incorporating some of the current elements of the housing plan going forward for the um, map and, and all the active training uh, transportation plans. Because so, it looks like we're gonna get densification in certain locations. And I just wanna to know that those are being layered into your conversations and analysis. It's layered into the analysis as well as for mode shift. So it'll be integrated into the new SANDAG theory. Thank you. Uh, there are commissioners, questions? I've just got a couple, but I'm gonna wanna make sure we get everyone else. Anyone? All right, I'll jump in. If anybody else thinks of other questions, just let me know. Um, Jennifer, uh, thank you for uh, for coming and, and for Evan for presenting this today. Um, I don't really, you know, I'm glad that we're that we're talking about this and that the city's, you know, finally embarking on this. I know we've been talking about it for several years and and the funding is now there, so things are getting kicked off. I understand it takes a while. It's good that we're starting. Um, one of the things that that I've always, you know, I've noticed in other cities and Encinitas has never had it and uh, because our our circulation element hasn't been updated in so long and now it is being updated. Um, other cities with modern mobility elements generally have some sort of TDIF or TIF or some sort of 
you know, fee program where new development um, effectively subsidizes future infrastructure improvements in the city. And, um, you know, as a developer in the city and someone who sees a lot of the the comments on on these bigger, you know, uh, more dense housing projects, it just, it kind of begs the question as to why we haven't had some sort of TIF program or TDIF program in the city of Encinitas and that we should have one as part of this new mobility element. Um, and, and basically what it is for those who aren't familiar, um, it, it directs fund, it directs uh, fees from development projects directly to infrastructure improvements in there in that local vicinity, instead of sending fees to the general fund, which are used for pavement rehabilitation anywhere in the city, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it would be, I think it would solve, um, you know, one of the issues that we've had based on comments that I've heard in the city is to have directed transportation uh, infrastructure funding from new development. So it's something something to have the consultants look at. And then a more specific question that I have for you guys. Um, we've been getting a lot of emails and public comments about La Costa and whether La Costa is going to be a two lane or a four lane. Right now it's designated as a four lane road in the circulation element, but in the new mobility element update, um, you know, is that going to be downsized to a two lane or is it going to stay at a four lane? And everybody wants to know the answer to that question because it has implications for what type of stop controlled intersection is put in at Vulcan and La Costa. It has implications for pedestrian and bicycle mobility east west on that main corridor, which is, you know, this, this commission is tasked with looking out for that. It has implications with the five or six new development projects that are at or near the intersection of La Costa and Coast Highway. So my question is, is there any way to get some sort of early on answer on that without waiting until 2023 to design some of this infrastructure around La Costa to support all this new development? So Bryce said chicken before, you know, the cart before the horse potentially. So I, you know, as we talk about circulation network for the city, you know, what what role does La Costa play? So I think that's going to have to come into that discuss discussion. Um, and you know, running that model network, um, Abe knows that straight the best. Um, and what's potentially going on and where the direction may go, and that actually may feed what that decision is and then that affects the rest of the model of where traffic's moving and how it's moving um the i understand and and we did talk about it at city council when we you know when we did this meeting uh, or when we um approved the contract with wsp that this was a critical um need for la costa um so we are aware and we are talking to WSP to see about ways that we could get more information or feed more information. Um, so that's still under consideration of how we do that. I think I'll be interested to hear public input from that, just that community um, in August, early August to see where, where the community, which I, I understand that the community has different interests too and different concerns within Lucadia. So um, I'd be interested to hear what they're thinking too, but I'm gonna, the future of La Costa, <laughs> um, Abe's gonna know best at this point, um, what that looks like or what that feasibility is. Okay, okay. Yes, I think I can add a, a one minute uh, follow up on that. Um, as, as, Jennifer mentioned we did uh, check a few options with regards to how we can uh, do a piece of the mobility element in advance or maybe call it some, something else, a corridor analysis, um, some sort of a, a modeling slash engineering um, approach toward the ultimate fate of La Costa while we know the mobility element will take a long time. Uh, it's not yet finalized, uh, but we, we are in the process of uh, doing something about it. We, you will hear more about it 
Uh, let me not say much because it's not a done deal, uh, but we had discussions with Jennifer. We had discussions with Lillian, our director. Uh, there are opportunities out there that we might be able to do some sort of a uh, interim um, approach toward, you know, do some sort of a traffic engineering slash planning slash corridor analysis on this, on this project, on this potential project without actually calling it a mobility analysis, a mobility element component. Uh, but more on that to come. I think the other concern too, or just the information that just based my understanding is the level of detail that's being desired for determining La Costa is beyond a mobility element in the sense of just a classification of the street and the modeling. Um, there may be a more uh, detailed need of understanding what the limits are of that street where the property lines are and all that level of detail that just doesn't come with a circulation element. Uh, understood. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think where, at least based on what I've been hearing here at, at traffic commission from, from the public and, and from staff and from councilmen, I think everybody kind of wants that to be a two lane road as it is today. And we just need something to verify that it can remain a two lane road. Uh, and then, once that determination is made by the city, ideally in advance of 2023, some of these interim fixes that, that are happening, like, um, you know, not putting in the sidewalk on the south side and putting in the all-way stop controlled intersection at Vulcan instead of a roundabout or a traffic signal because it's not known, you know, whether that's going to be a four lane or a two lane. I think the city can start making more progress on those things. Um, you know, I, I'm a little bit more scared of that of that uh, stop sign going in at Vulcan and La Costa than my fellow commissioners, and I hope that it doesn't create a, a, a bad traffic situation on La Costa. But these types of interim fixes shouldn't be like 10-year interim fixes; they should be two-year interim fixes, and we should be working toward what's the ultimate solution. Um, and in this case, it all hinges on whether La Costa is a two lane or a four lane. So anyway, I just wanted to put that comment out there and then the comment about some sort of TIF or TDIF element. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Yeah, uh, it's my understanding that the city owned right of way on La Costa is 40 feet wide. And I compare this with the city owned right of way on Quail Gardens Drive, which is 70 feet wide. And so I kind of mentally say, how are we gonna put uh, all of the uh, improvements in that would need would be needed. Uh, we can make La Costa Boulevard a 40 foot wide automobile only street, but that would be uh, going back uh, uh, 50 years. Uh, we could, of course, use eminent domain to take as much property as we want to uh, widen La Costa Boulevard, but uh, uh, the city budget isn't that uh, flush and the residents wouldn't like that either. So my suspicion is we'll have to end up with a two lane road with uh, sidewalks, a bike lane, and maybe some, uh, uh, maybe a bit of a median uh, and turn pockets. Uh, the alternative to turn pockets, of course, is to have some roundabouts along the way so people can do a UE to get into their homes. That's just my thought on the thoughts of right now. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Uh, Commissioner Von Neumann. You need to unmute. Uh, I'm glad to hear that there is gonna be outreach to the community. I just uh, wanna caution that sometimes Community outreaches may not actually reflect the majority of the community. Uh, if you have uh, a concern, you know, a large group of people who are against something and they're the loudest voices, sometimes the action is taken regarding that and it may not be the best thing. So as far as relying on community <clears throat> outreach, I think we need to be cognizant of the fact that it may not be equal input from the community. Just a thought. Thank you. All right. And with that, I think, uh, I don't think there's any more questions. So Jennifer and Evan, thank you for, uh, for presenting. Thanks for 
thanks for getting this uh, started. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be a uh, a fun adventure over the next couple of years for all of you. And um, Abe, to the extent that that you can invite Jennifer or Evan or both to to give us um, updates throughout the process, I think uh, myself and my fellow commissioners would would really appreciate that. And, and also to the extent that we can be um, you know, some sort of, of resource. I, I think this is why Commissioner Johnson started the, the subcommittee on, on the mobility element is so that we can serve um, and, and kind of help, whether that's through, um, you know, working at these public workshops or educating people on SB 743 and VMT and whatever we can do to be a resource to staff, um, you know, I think just, just let us know. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Evan. Thanks. Thank you, Evan. And Jennifer. Okay. Item 5D, direction from the city council for consideration of name change and duties of the Traffic and Public Safety Commission to reflect mobility instead of public safety. Mm -hmm. Abe, I'm guessing you're going to explain this one to us. Um, yes, Chair. Thank you, A. Banning, City Traffic Engineer. So, um, to be honest, initially when I was uh, drafting the agenda, um, the, I, I was directed by Commission to look into this, and we found that apparently on a item not related to traffic to traffic engineering, I think it was one of the mobility element items that went to Council. Uh, council decided to provide this side direction. Uh, to the staff and, and and for that reason the fact that the item was not an engineering item i did not know about it uh, and then we heard about this whole name change thing here and there and i asked amanda to look into council meetings and, and uh, she smartly found this direction from council at this uh, february or march meeting i think that it was a mobility element uh, review by council and there was like a side direction from council to do this um, at that point, I wanted to just provide this uh, update to commission that this is a thing about the potential name change and scope change. But then I thought instead of doing a presentation, it might be better to just have a um, agenda item that is not the final item. Obviously before going to council, I have to come to commission again for you to approve the item that is going to council. But I thought this will not cut it because we, you know, we cannot discuss and, and, and get, uh, you know, direction from the commission just with an update item. So more of this to come, but our agenda item tonight is about this, but we will discuss it in length, go over some feasible options, and I'll, I'll ask commission to provide me a clear recommendation and direction um, on what to change and how to change, and I'll come back with an actual report that, with your blessing, we'll go to council to change our Munico. So more on that to come tonight. On okay. item E, my, my regular updates, uh, the development projects citywide. Oh, before I get to that, I'm not sure if I mentioned uh, last month, uh, Bob Gralka, our, our engineer, is leaving us. He is um, retiring after 30 some years in the traffic world. So June 24th is his last day. Um, we have a recruitment open um, for uh, hopefully finding a good replacement for him. Would not be easy, but um, we would have to um, talk to our future engineer about this uh, development project uh, list that is provided to the commission. Uh, we did have a direction from the commission to kind of modify it a little bit. I do know that it was touched a little. I'm not sure if it's still there 100%. It might not be. Uh, but we will get there. This is this is a new item. We have had it for two, three months. And um, again, when we have that new engineer, we'll, we'll look into this in depth and provide something that commission likes 100%. Uh, but do provide us your comment. It doesn't need to be during the commission, even on a side, like just email me, hey, Abe, like if we do it this way, it would be better. I would like to come up with some sort of a monthly update that the commission is satisfied with. The South Coast 101 improvements, uh, this is an standing item commission suggested I have it here. Um, we, we are almost done. Well, all the um, bus stops that were removed by NCTD, we added the wheel stops and ballers there. The strapping was modified. We continued the cycle track. Um, 
the few bollards on the northbound side in advance of Los Olas were removed. Uh, the buffer was converted to dash. So we did we did make some uh, changes. Um, I do believe all the legends are down, the bicyclists may use full lane and all the speed limit legends. So we did a lot there. Um, I still like to do a little bit more of education and outreach now that the COVID is uh, almost beyond us. I, I mean, we, we kind of got lucky that with COVID we were able to do this pretty quick with a very low traffic on the road. But the downside to that was, was that we didn't get to do the outreach and education. We talked about having all those um, booths out there and, and having all those flyers and, and educating components that we were um, planning on doing, but maybe we can go back. And although it's just, a year, it's just around a year after or a year and a half after, but we still can do those things. And I think we can benefit from those educations now that you know summer is coming. Uh, the North Coast 101 improvements. So um, I'm not sure how much um, commission have been following council. This has been an ongoing thing. So with the streetscape, um, with all the constraints that we have with regards to funding it, uh, cities are pursuing different routes. We are looking into possibly securing a $20 million loan that would help us um, implement streetscape uh, on the northerly piece north of um, Lucadia Boulevard. The, the segment uh, B, which is um, north of Basel, um, we don't have any plans at the moment on the books, but we are trying to find a way to fund it with our own uh, internal budget to do a um, modified or reimagined streetscape in a way that we will implement as much of the traffic calming and as much of the road diet and as much of the restriping, active transportation enhancements of the streetscape um, with minimizing the um, I guess the concrete work, minimizing the sidewalk work, the parking, the diagonal parking work, or the median and roundabout modification. So the goal is to find a design that can give us um, the most amount of traffic calming, give us the road diet, give us all the bike lanes and buffers that we currently don't have, especially on the southbound. Um, so make it look as much as possible to the streetscape um, but not necessarily the whole uh, 40, 50 million dollar glorified version of the streetscape. There are a lot of different components, coastal commission, um, community. There's a lot of different pieces, moving parts, uh, but that's what's going on right now. We are trying to design something that I said is as close as possible to the streetscape, but is still feasible considering our constraints. Um, more on that to come, obviously when the design is um, underway or done, uh, I'll do my best to uh, bring it to the commission and receive input and feedback from the commission. But this is a item that council is actively involved in and they're providing all the uh, directions to the staff. Um, uh, Commissioner Von Neumann, I have a quick question for Abe. On, 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 on that uh, Highway 101 improvements at, at a recent council meeting, there was some discussion or question as to whether a continuous bike lane uh, is in the plans uh, to on the southbound side. Uh, has that been resolved? Is a continuous bike lane in the plans? Correct. Yes, there is. Thank you. Um, the Vulcan Avenue crosswalk and I'll see an update. Uh, you've probably seen it uh, with the construction going on for El Portal. Uh, the crosswalk we had by Paul Ecke stop sign uh, would have to be removed. So as an um, alternate solution um, during the temporary uh, period of time where we have construction going on there, we quickly installed a, a crosswalk at Halcyon. I don't think the RFP is out there yet, but it will be installed. Um, or maybe the RFP is there. Um, the project is not 100% complete. I do know that the crosswalk was marked, but uh, we still have a few minor things left there, but the crosswalk is active. Um, Walken Avenue and La Costa intersection, I'm sure you've heard about this. So we presented uh, with the commission's direction, three options to the city council. 
to do the stop sign and come back and report in six months. Option two was to do a stop sign, quickly start constructing a traffic signal. And the third was um, uh, install a stop sign and come back with a study for a feasibility of a roundabout. Um, council, after discussion, decided to proceed with option one. Um, only the stop sign at the moment. Uh, however, I guess it was a modified option one because two of the council members, uh, uh, Councilmember Kranz and Councilmember Moscow, I believe, uh, formed a subcommittee that will be contacting, uh, have they have been in conversation with the city of Carlsbad uh, for the possibility of securing funds um, from a different channel. Uh, there is a I believe there is a impact analysis. Uh, there's a very old impact analysis that was done and. Uh, set aside some funds for certain improvements over there. I'm not familiar with that. It was a long time ago, um, but there are there are opportunities where uh, City of Carlsbad with us can go 50-50 and implement certain improvements uh, on La Costa. Uh, the goal was not to rush it and uh, evaluate the possibility of using that those funds. Um, so more on that to come. Uh, and then I did mention about the whole La Costa corridor evaluation. So that's something that is still um, that, that still might happen. We might have a study that will go over the corridor and give us um, solutions for the corridor soon. Um, the Vulcan Avenue traffic calming went to council recently, uh, last week actually, and um, the, the council voted for it. Uh, we will implement the, um, the low hanging fruit improvements on Vulcan per se. We will be narrowing down the lanes, opening up a little bit of a space on the east side that can be used as a multi-use path. It's not much, in, in, um, but um, the good thing about it is in the majority of the corridor, we will have four feet or more of edge area that currently doesn't exist. So we'll do some traffic calming with the lane narrowing um, and uh, we'll open up a space. We are doing some pavement legends. We're doing three race crosswalks um, that will affect traffic calming. So a lot of good stuff will, will happen. Again, this is not the perfect scenario because uh, Vulcan Avenue, we know it's not in a very good shape, um, but before answering the other major questions about the double tracking, about the coastal rail trail, about the drainage on Vulcan, we cannot rebuild Vulcan from scratch. So we have to live with what we have for now until those bigger questions are answered. And we think this is a, this is a good starting point. Um, the project is funded. We will start construction soon on that. I guess by construction, I mean restriping and adding those three raised crosswalks. Um, Speed Legends were installed at La Costa and Requeza, item seven. And uh, for our HSIP projects, for three of our, our HSIPs, uh, the Z crossing on uh, Via Molina at El Camino Real, the, the pedestrian signal, for our four signal modifications in the city that we're adding a protected left turn phasing and for our LED street lighting conversion in the city. For all three of those, we are going to uh, Sacramento to get our authorization for uh, construction very soon. We anticipate we'll have uh, this document called E76 that would give us the funds, half a million for Z crossing, um, another half a million for those four signal modifications and 700,000 for the LED upgrades um, within the next two to three months. I will update the commission on the construction. Um, that concludes my uh, monthly updates. Um, Chair, I'm open to questions if there are any. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Abe. Any questions? Yes, could you remind me of the, where the three crosswalk, raised cross crosswalks will be on Vulcan, which three intersections? Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, one is Orpheus, one is Sanford, and one is Andrew. Okay. And when you're talking about um, walking paths on Vulcan up to, La up to La Costa Avenue, will they be on both the east and the west side or just on the west east side? It's uh, the whole corridor is on the east side, right at Andrew, because of the curvature and the fact that we have some room off the road. We are using that crossing that we're adding at Andrew to move people to the west and then continue 
toward the intersection on the west side. So around that uh, double curve that we have on um, Vulcan, right before La Costa, the walkway would be on the west side. Thank you. And there's a lot of signage now on Vulcan. Park parallel, park this way, park that way. Is that permanent or is that just kind of to get people the idea and then you'll remove some of it? Um, to be honest with you, my involvement with that parking project was limited. I will revisit that thing to, uh, I, can't, I can't see how there is a lot going on there and, and a lot happened in a very short period of time. I'll revisit that and make sure we don't have sign pollution there. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Commissioner Von Neumann. Uh, Commissioner Von Neumann here. Abe, on the status of the current H HSIP projects, uh, what is the status of the grant we got to improve Coast Highway between Swamis and Chesterfield? Um, good question. Uh, we, we are still waiting for one document from Caltrans um, to be able to fund the design. Uh, if, if, if we don't have that final, uh, I guess, award document, we might not be able to uh, charge Caltrans for the staff time spent on this. So we are putting it on hold, but uh, it's not like any activity is happening without the commission involved. I'll, I'll make sure that the commission is involved. Okay, like how long a hold do you anticipate? The, the, oh, the reason why, oh, okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, like, like next month we'll talk about it for sure. Okay. I would hate to have to go back to the interim <laughs> project that we uh, approved. No, no, it will happen very soon. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Abe. Sure. All right, if there aren't any more questions, we can move on to item six, approval of the minutes. This is from the May 10th, 2021 meeting. Do we have any questions, comments, motion to approve? I move approval. I'll second that. All right, motion and a second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Now we are moving on to action item 7A. Rename and modify the duties of the Traffic and Public Safety Commission. Thank you, Chair. Um, Abe again, uh, City Traffic Engineer. Um, so as, as I mentioned during our monthly update, so we had this direction from the city council. Amanda, can you share the presentation, the, the report? So uh, the, the, the verbatim direction from the council was to consider changing the name of the commission and its duties to affect mobility instead of public safety. Um, this was word by word the direction. So the way I read it, there are two different pieces to this. One is uh, to modify the name. This is uh, right in the middle of the page. Um, I, I, I got two things from this. One was to rename the, the commission, obviously, uh, but, but, but the main thing was to reflect on mobility. And the second piece was um, not to focus on public safety. The way I understood, and then again, this is open for interpretation, I guess. Uh, I'm pretty sure council did not mean that they don't want us to get involved in traffic safety because yeah. uh, we hear a lot about traffic calming. We hear a lot about uh, safety with regards to collisions, uh, bike safety, vehicle safety, pedestrian safety. So. I am kind of confident that when they said instead of public safety focus on mobility, they don't they didn't mean that we, we want to make things faster. So um, what what I, I played with with a bunch of different phrases and words. And again, what I thought would cover council's um, goal, um, what I ended up with was mobility and traffic safety commission. To have the safety word in there, but drop the public safety and then just use traffic safety to clarify that in this commission, we'll be focusing on uh, safety aspects with regards to traffic and not um, emergency response, not fire, not crime, not all these other stuff that 
um, I'm sure uh, Chair will remember a long time ago, we had this conversation that uh, it is mentioned in the Muni Code that we're supposed to discuss these things and, and, and provide advice and, and recommendation to council on these, but we never do. The fact that this commission is handled by me as a city traffic commission, so the city traffic engineer, I have very, very minimal authority, if anything, with regards to those other um, features that had been foreseen in the, in the commission's role. So um, I did bring, uh, I'm not sure if the commissioners had the chance to read. Uh, if you go further down, Amanda, I, I did copy paste uh, the codes that we have um, in the Muni code about the roles and responsibilities of the commission. The first piece, it talks about the commissioners, the seven members, five being from different neighborhoods and the, the, the other two being at large, uh, how they're selected, what their um, conditions should be, um, how, the, how the commission operates once a month, and then it talks about the duties. So other than the name, uh, which if the commission has other ideas or if commissioners want to throw out other names that they feel like it's better, obviously we can, we can vote on those. I'm not sure if the commission wants to weigh in with regards to the number of commissioners. Now that we're going to modify the Muni code, uh, that's why I didn't want to bring a final item because there's too much to modify or change if we want to. Now, now that we're visiting this, uh, I might, commissioner's idea might be to do a lot of different things here. So the first piece is about how commissioners are selected, the number of commissioners, the neighborhoods. So if I, I don't, I'm not at the moment proposing any changes here, but obviously this is also possible if the commission wants to provide an idea for me to elaborate on or talk to our attorneys. And then when I bring back my final report, uh, change something in there, it is possible. And then the last piece, the, the duties is where I guess the, the biggest change that, that council, I mean, I'm sure council just didn't want to change the name of the commission. Um, they wanted to um, have a more clear role. So as you can see, as and as you've read, um, it is in line with how we were operating so far. Um, the major roles of the commission, one is a liaison between public and the city council. So receiving certain inputs from public uh, comments, concerns, elaborate on those and create items that would go to council off of those items. Um, B and C talk about options that um, the, the commission gets to vote on modifying a um, striping, a traffic control, a certain intersection, a certain change in the city or not to modify those things. And either way, um, send them to council uh, and then the other option is to evaluate options, uh, evaluate items that um, we receive the direction from the city council on those. Um, and then it talks about um, on uh, paragraph E about the role of the commission being advisory, which again, it can be modified. Again, council did not direct us to modify this, but if commission feels like they want to define a new role for themselves, uh, I'll be happy to write a report um, cause this direction from council was to commission. It wasn't to me, it wasn't to staff. So commission would have to give me hints or, or guidelines on how they want this modified version to look like. Um, based on the way I read it, I read and interpreted the uh, direction from the council. Uh, Amanda, if you go a few lines down, uh, I came up with a few suggestions. Again, this is nothing. Uh, it's just a starting point. Um, I suggest, I thought it would be a good idea to convert the name to Mobility and Traffic Safety Commission uh, to keep both mobility uh, and safety elements in there. Mobility being where we have like a super bad congestion, let's say Rancho Santa Fe situation uh, or La Costa uh, in certain areas uh, in certain periods of time. So when we are trying to fix that solution situation, it's not necessarily a safety improvements. We are actively um, improving mobility when we eliminate those congestions. And then the traffic safety component obviously is here. Um, the second, um, I thought to clarify, we have a lot of items in the Muni code that the code authorizes me or the city council uh, to make changes, to implement things um, without a notion of a traffic commission. So this link is not there. 
uh, in some codes of the municipal code to uh, define a role for the traffic commission. So it says, for example, the city council can approve a traffic signal at a certain location or a city council could vote for a roadway to be closed. Um, for less than 48 hours, a city traffic commission, uh, traffic engineer can do it. More than that, the city council would have to vote for it. So I'm thinking to modify the, the duties of the, muni of the traffic commission in a way that we can say, okay, every, anything that the muni code uh, with regards to traffic allows the city council to modify or change, uh, there might be a role for the traffic commission there to evaluate that in advance and provide recommendation to the city council. Uh, how the language of that is drafted, um, I would have to spend some more time on it, but that was my goal. Um, the, the number three, I did mention about it, the traffic safety will be our focus, uh, although it has always been that, but we will drop the other pieces in the duties about um, fire, about um, emergency response, about health, about um, marijuana, all, all these stuff that, that we hear about uh, that the residents have safety concerns with, uh, we will um, remove those from the scope of the work of the commission. And um, one, the, the four and five are, uh, I guess, a big change that I am proposing based on the direction I have received from uh, our new city manager and our director. So as I'm sure you've noticed, we add items to the traffic log and then um, we evaluate those and many times we come back with something that would look good and seems very beneficial. Um, however, a lot of times the budget provisions, the, the, the capacity of the city is not there. So while something on paper might, might seem very good to do or undertake, um, the city manager's um, opinion is that the city should have a annual or biannual work plan that is approved by council every year that gives us the guideline of where to spend our resources being staff time or money. Um, with that, I think it would be a good idea to provide a list of undertakings that the commission feels are good ideas for a future year or every six months or something can be our traffic law, can be uh, something that commission votes on every six months or every year, or we can just have a special meeting every year or one meeting, we dedicate that meeting to talk about what the commission wants to do that year. And then these items would have to be blessed by council. Because I'm hearing more and more that the topics that we discuss here, let's say the energy that we spent on the traffic signal at Vulcan and La Costa. We evaluated, we had the warrants analyzed, it went to the, uh, we hired a consultant, did the warrant analysis, then we designed the signal, it was presented to the traffic commission, but then when it went to council, at that point, council felt like this is not the highest priority of the city, where we want to spend $400,000 of the city budget on this. So for that purpose, I think we have to find a way to streamline, uh, I don't want to necessarily use the word waste, but to use our capacity where we have clear direction from council that if commission spends time and energy and staff spend time and energy on a topic, it is already blessed. The idea is already blessed by council. Again, how that is incorporated in the Muni code and into our approach, the direction I've had is to have a work plan for the traffic division that talks about these are the projects that are done deals, they are, they're budgeted, council already knows about them. These are the stuff that the commission and council already provided us recommendations and directions, or they're aware. And the third piece are projects that are nice to do's or we would like to do, or we would like to undertake, but then every year or every six months, we have to go to council and let council go over those five, 10, 15, 20 different items. And with all the restraints that the city has, all the constraints, all the budget issues, all the staff resources issues that we have, decide which one of those council wants to direct us to pursue. After that list is green lighted, then it would be way easier for us to spend time and energy on those and 
we clearly know that council is, expect, is expecting these things to go back to them. Um, again, um, this is in no way an agenda that I would like commission to vote on. These are ideas at the moment. You can't say, oh, we like these, add these four other stuff in it, or just we don't like it at all and go back and do something else about it. Council did not give us a deadline on modifying the Municode, but the fact that it is a Municode modification, it would require ordinance, first reading, second reading. So we would have to go back to city council and I certainly want commission to approve my report before going to council. Um, I'm, I'm open to questions, Chair. If uh, I'm not sure if I was clear enough or what, if what, I, what I was trying to do was clear enough, but yeah, let me know what you think. All right, thank you, Abe. Um, I'll, I'll start this one off. When I first saw this, I was a little bit uh, confused, and I had heard, I actually didn't watch that city council meeting where uh, this was discussed, so I don't have the benefit. I should have, um, but I, I don't have the context too much. But uh, Abe, I think you you kind of gave us a little bit of the flavor in this in this presentation. Um, you know, some of this, I think, I think seems a little bit unnecessary, like just getting into the semantics. I think we should just be called the mobility commission. Um, it used to be called the traffic commission when I, when I joined, uh, whenever that was five or six years ago. And uh, we added public safety, I think at the request of, of council, because they didn't want us just talk, talking about traffic anymore. Um, and so we changed the name to the Traffic and Public Safety Commission. Now changing the circulation element, to the mobility element, um, you know, all things movement in the city, which used to just fall under traffic is now being called mobility. Um, and I think it, it makes sense to just call it the Mobility Commission and, and leave off the traffic safety in the name, although we can still talk about traffic safety or safety as it relates to all elements of mobility, traffic, um, you know, all, all modes, vehicular, uh, pedestrian, bicycle, transit, whatever it might be. So anyway, I, I think, I think we might be making a little bit of a mountain out of a mole, molehill on this. And Abe, I, I understand that, you know, you were just kind of toss this thing based on council's discussion that our name might, might change. But, uh, I say just, let's just call ourselves the mobility commission. The rest of this stuff sounds fine. Um, Item four in your staff report, when I was on the environmental commission, we just called that our annual work plan. Um, I don't know that we've ever done that on this commission, but uh, I can understand why the city manager's office and council would want it. Um, and then, yeah, this other stuff seems fine to me. So I, I don't think we need to have a protracted discussion about changing our name, but, uh, uh, fellow commissioners, let me know what, what you think about uh, about all of this. Anybody? Yeah, Commissioner yeah. Johnson. Yes, uh, I actually watched that uh, city council meeting. Uh, it was presented as an idea by the mayor that uh, we should call it the Traffic and Mobility Commission rather than the uh, uh, traffic and public safety. And uh, so I researched in this a little bit. Carl said his son with the name traffic and mobility. And uh, for their, uh, their element, and uh, it seems reasonable to, to go with that. They call it the mobility element, but their commission is called traffic and mobility. Uh, and by the way, there uh, I also read Carl said uh, mobility element of their uh, uh, planning document, which is, was updated fairly recently and, and gives us some insight into what we should and shouldn't do in ours. Uh, anyway, uh, as they say, uh, a rose by any other name uh, still has thorns. And we'll uh, Commissioner Prendergast. Uh, thanks, Abe, for uh, bringing this to our attention and, and, and putting it all out there for us to, to think about. Um, understand the work plan idea. I get it. Um, you certainly don't want, you know, going off on tangents. My concern there is that we are limited to the work plan and that the 
reconstituting of the municipal code eliminates the, the, the commission's ability to deal with real time issues, um, whether it's a stop sign on Vulcan that came up and needed to be voted on or the safety issues associated with the uh, speed bumps on Lone Jack or Fortuna Ranch Road, excuse me, or the traffic circles, that, that we lose the opportunity to be the liaison of real time concerns that the constituents have uh, filter it through and then make recommendations to the city council. So I'm a little concerned about being limited to a work plan and maybe uh, uh, Chairman Grover can talk a little bit about how that worked on the Environmental Commission, um, having not been around when, when that was going on. The, the other concern I have is by eliminating the word safety, um, in, in Alevenhine, we, we have serious fire safety evacuation issues. Um, there's already been somebody submitted tonight talking about the ingress and egress off of Double L and Cali Margarita because of the sewer work that's being done on Lone Jack that's trapping us literally for 30 minutes at a time um, to get out of uh, Alevenhein and finding out that the fire department doesn't have a remote access to the gate, that the sheriff department doesn't have a key. Um, is a little concerning. So I don't want to lose the ability to have real-time concerns brought to the attention. And yes, those are safety issues. They are also are traffic issues. But you know, back here, we've got horse issues, we've got fire issues, and those are safety issues that are correlated with traffic and with ingress and egress. So my only concern at the moment is, is especially on, on number four, I think it is, that we somehow uh, disengage traffic with safety. And I, I don't, I want to be, con I'm concerned about that based on the wording and I'm not a, a municipal attorney, but um, there are some reasons that they were in the code and they brought them to the code for that reason. Uh, and now we seem to be unwinding that a little bit. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Schultz. Um, I, I am very comfortable with Abe's recommendation to call us the Mobility and Traffic Safety Committee. I think mobility is our primary focus as along with traffic safety. And I, when I read it, I said, yes, we need to do that because we really are not involved with fire, crime and um, police is and police issues. We are involved with traffic, and I think this makes it very clear to the public and to us what our what our purview is. So I I will support um, Abe's recommendation of tra mobility and traffic safety commission. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Von Neumann. Uh, Commissioner Von Neumann here. Um, I, I too like uh, Abe's recommendation for mobility and traffic safety commission. I, I definitely think that kind of summarizes everything that we've been dealing with that I haven't been aware of for the last couple of years. I'm a little concerned about like, I understand removing police, fire, lifeguards and everything from some overview of our commission, but where would that overview and citizen uh, involvement go to? Is there another commission that those issues could go to? Um, so I would hate just to cut them off and, you know, hopefully the message isn't to the community that the city doesn't care about those things, but they have to be addressed somewhere. But I, I don't, I, I do agree that they shouldn't be in, in, in our commission at this time. Um, I'm a little concerned about the, uh, uh, only being able to bring up issues or having the city council bless certain issues and concerns like once a year. Um, I like the idea of our, of our log. Um, I think it's more responsive. Uh, it's quicker response to citizens concerns and all. I don't see any, I don't see any issue with uh, uh, having things put on the log and having the staff look at those in a uh, preliminary type of way, you know, maybe not developing full plans for things, but I, I, I would hate to lose the log and I would hate to have to wait till every March for something su such as 
what I'm interested in is crosswalks on uh, Coast Highway and, and on La Costa. I would hate to have to, you know, mention that in June and have to wait till the following March to have anything done on that. So, so I, I'm a little concerned about having to wait uh, a whole, you know, months and months uh, to get the blessing of the city council for any further action to go on. I think we need to be a little more responsive uh, to city staff and all. So it may be semantics, I, I, I don't know, but um, uh, I would hate to lose that uh, ability to respond quickly to citizen concerns. Like I would hate, I would hate to have to wait till March to have anything looked at around Capri School, just for an example. But other than changing the name to Tra Mobility and Traffic Safety Commission, uh, I think that's perfectly adequate and that's more in line with what we are doing and have been doing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Trout. Yes, yeah, so um, let's see, I, I support uh, mobility and uh, traffic safety for the the, um, the new name. And, um, you know, obviously I'm new, but I do think that um, it's really refreshing that this commission has the number of um, the public that are uh, communicating with you. So I think, you know, I think the hands-on approach that, that you have on the commission, I think is really good. And, and obviously the community uses it. Okay, thank you. Anybody mm -hmm. else? So it, it, it sounds like we like the name Mobility and Traffic Safety Commission. Um, and Abe, I, I think we're, unless, unless I'm not hearing everyone, I think we're good with, with all of these items that you added. We just, there's some concern over number four. And I, I don't think, and Abe, maybe you can clarify this. I don't think the intent is that that, that work plan that we would create uh, we have to stick exclusively to that. For example, if somebody comes and brings up a new issue, we'd go add it to the follow-up log and it can be added. The work plan is just sort of, a, you know, generally here are the, you know, broad items that we're going to be discussing over the course of the year that we know of right now. And we can add other items as they come up, right? No, exactly. Um However, what I would like to bring up, I guess it's partially my fault. The first two, three years that, um, I mean, it's, it's now past three years that I've been with the city. We had a very big chunk of money sitting in certain accounts that um, were not touched and they were available for various projects. And I kind of started doing a lot of different things around town and, and modified a lot of different roads. Uh, that, that luxury is not there anymore. So items that two years ago looked like if you, if you had brought up the idea, let's say the, uh, the six, seven, uh, potential race crosswalks that commissioner Van Neumann mentioned and commission supported and went on the law. If it was three years ago, I would say, I certainly look at it. I'll design it. I'll come back with a plan and we'll go to council and ask them to fund it. At the moment with the budget situation that we have and with a long list of, you know, undone projects, I'm pretty sure uh, it will not go as far as we like it to go. So I guess I can just, just off of my own judgment and the conversations I have with my director and with the city manager, uh, provide commission some sort of an unofficial idea of if something is um, low hanging fruit enough for us to put it on the log and pursue and go study it and design something for it and bring it back. Or if something is um, not, let's say uh, branch of Santa Fe residents would have come to commission and say, well, we have a serious congestion issue and we want it analyzed. Now commission would obviously find this reasonable and then would want to add something to the log and ask staff to evaluate. Uh, but then I would easily tell commission that, well, while I can add this to the log, I'm pretty sure I cannot touch this unless I go to that once a year meeting or twice a year meeting to council and receive direction. Or 
um, what we did on on um, Vulcan or or what we did on Neptune or like all the all these other San Alejo modifications. A lot of these things that we did that um, cost us around I don't know 10k, 20k, 30k to design and another 50, 60, 70k to build. Um, those fifty thousand to a hundred thousand dollar projects, all of those um, at the moment are not projects that I can just promise to commission. I mean, I can certainly spend the uh, staff time to analyze or evaluate those, but I certainly don't want to spend, you know, a staff's energy on something that then I know if I go to our director, or go to our um, budget manager, it's not available. It's not something that we can do in the end. So that's, I guess, some sort of a dilemma. I can, I mean, anything can be added to the law. And, um, but when it comes to spending time on it, that's where I have a hard time. I would like to spend time on something that I think can come to fruition compared to stuff that I know will not go anywhere. That That's a little different than, that, that sounds like it's defaulting to the one year only um, methodology that, the things that are popping up, you know, can be reviewed, but it sounds like our recommendations then have to go through the budget director and then work its way up through the city council, um, rather than going directly to the city council. Is that my, is that the correct understanding? So if something costs $30,000 and it's our recommendation that we do it, such as we'll just take a raised sidewalk, for instance, you're saying that you can design it but unless it's been approved by the once a year budget committee or the oversight committee by the city council, you can't do anything more. I don't have a hard number to be honest, to say like up to this limit, we can come up with project and just go do them. Um, again, I don't, um, it will take staff time, I guess, many of, many of these things that that might not happen eventually. Like, I mean, I gave you a few examples, like, like the La Costa signal, we spent a lot of energy on it. Um, or, or even Vulcan, I mean, if, if you listen to the conversation that happened on council, it could have been um, very easily shut down just because um, we had um, one of our council members was very interested in forming a, an official walkway slash trail on the west side of Vulcan and modify the, the parking that we have there to, to parallel parking and form an official uh, walkway there on that side. So um, again, many of these things to get to a plan, to get to a design, to take it to council, it does take time. Um, I'm, I'm, don't take me wrong, I am I am on the same page with you. I am. I feel like there are a lot of things that are small. There are a lot of things that uh, are beneficial to the city, don't have a huge staff or budget impact, and we should be able to handle those. Um, again, it, it can be there. It can be, uh, we, we create, as, as Chair Grover mentioned, uh, two separate items. We have a traffic log that is for these, I guess, lower hanging fruit, simpler projects that can be beneficial. Let's say the, the conversation that we had today about improving the intersection of Burgundy and Capri. We spent some time on it last year. We did some stuff there. We can revisit and, and reevaluate to see if there are other opportunities there. That certainly can be something that, I mean, if it's going to be improved with the new Mark crosswalk with $3,000, we'll go do it. Um, but if it involves modifying that intersection per se, adding three ramps at three different corners, then we're talking about a $25,000 project. You know, at that point, it becomes a different project, and I'm sure if, at the moment I cannot fund this myself. So where where we cut, where we draw that line, I think that's where we have to kind of put our heads together, and maybe I mean I don't see any other way other than just going by judgment. Uh, we cannot go to council, you know, once a month. There's no way we can do that. So to have a work plan log and a regular log, I guess I don't know. I mean, again, this is. This is something that we can we can discuss more. Thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner von Neumann, did you have another question? I see your your hand, your virtual hand is up. <laughs> I'll I'll uh, <laughs> take it down. I I just well, 
what can I say? I, I, I think I, I, I feel, I feel uh, Abe's uh, in a, in a tough position here, and uh, I'm just I'm just concerned that uh, the things that we want to we spend our time and energy and emotions on, uh, and that's why we're involved with the commission. If it's all for naught, or if it, if those things can only be considered once a year. I just see a lot of the improvements that have been going on in our city the last few years come to a screeching halt. And, uh, you know, I'm just, dis I, 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 I'm, yeah, I, I'm disappointed in the, in the thought that, uh, we have to come up with all our ideas and present them and then get a blessing once a year. So I, I don't quite know how this is going to shake out. Um, I like the idea of concentrating on mobility and traffic safety, but what's the point if nothing can be done yeah, except for uh, once a year? What can I say? Commissioner Von Newman, let, let me, I think Commissioner Prendergast, um, you know, asked that I maybe explain how this worked on the Environmental Commission. I think that would be helpful. So. It's it's not, it's really not meant to pigeonhole commissions. If it were, I, I'd be the first one saying this is BS. We're not going to do it. it. It's quite the opposite. I think they just want to set. Council wants to set realistic expectations for its commissions, so that you know, in our case, on the environmental commission, so that we didn't go off trying to ban everything, <laughs> you know, that might that might go into the ocean, and then after a year's worth of work and involving staff time and you know, consultants and all this, we bring it to city council and they say, no, we're not gonna do any of this stuff. Um, so it, it's really meant just to get everybody on the same page. And frankly, I think we can use it as a tool. Um, we should be as a commission and, and Abe, maybe in a couple of months, we can have this as, a, as an agenda item. All of us should be coming to one of these meetings with what are the things that we as commissioners want to accomplish this year on this commission, absent the stuff that that comes at us and we react to, what are the things that we want to be proactive about? Um, and we should put those on our work plan. And then when that work plan goes to city council and city council blesses it, we, we don't really have a green light, but you've got a little bit of a green slash yellow light that, yeah, we agree that you should be looking into these things. So, you know, I, I'd say let's, let's, look at the glasses half full approach and um, turn it into a positive because that's what we did on the environmental commission with our work plans. And, and it seemed to work out very well. And then the things that we're more reactive to, you know, if a public speaker comes and talks about traffic on Melba or traffic on La Costa or public safety or e-bikes or whatever it might be, that can be part of a separate, you know, follow-up log that we're reacting to, but we should have a, a proactive work plan. So anyway, that's just my two cents on this. Uh, Commissioner so, Von Chair, Newman here. Me... I understand. I understand what you're saying, and that and that does make sense. And when you say, you know, like once a year, commissioners come and you know share or, or share with what their major thoughts are and concerns. I'm thinking about myself and what I've been saying for years is traffic is motor you know motor vehicle speeds you know that's a big general thing and uh there's a lot of little things that can go to affecting that but uh you know that would be my main thing if you know today is uh traffic speeds and then uh uh been dealing with the things that come up on on other uh from from the public and all but i understand what you're saying and it makes sense i'm a little i feel a little better after your explanation. Thank you. Sure. Uh, let's see, Commissioner Schultz. Uh, you are muted. Thank you, Brian. You said it very well. One of my frustrations on this commission has been that we just react to little things here and there, and there doesn't seem to be a set of priorities of where are we actually going with all of this. And things do cost money. And I hadn't realized that when Abe came in, he had a 
had a, a little pile of money that nobody had bothered to spend on mobility. And he's now <laughs> spent it. <laughs> and this is this is good. This is what he should have been doing. Um, and I th I think we need, I think your idea of coming up with our list of priorities, what are our thing, our our real major concerns would put us in a, a much more tenable position for the for change than just reacting to this, that, and the other. So thank you very much, Brian. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to admit on this commission, for, for those who were around or remember, um, Abe, I think you remember this, when we had a joint, joint meeting between the Traffic and Public Safety Commission and the City Council, and um, maybe I was the only one on the, on the Traffic and Public Safety Commission at that I time. Think so. I think um, so. But you know, it, it's really easy to whine about, hey, we're sick of just reacting to this street that wants speed bumps and that street that wants speed reductions. You know, we want to do something. We want to be more like the planning committee. You know, and and I've had that sentiment for a long time, but uh, I've also been lazy about it, right? Like we can we can propose whatever we want and have Abe work on it and bring it to council. It's just it's some element of work, mm -hmm. but. If all of us commissioners came, you know, let's say in two months, and we each had the one main thing that each of us wanted to focus on, and that became the bones of our work plan, and we committed to, you know, whoever brought up, like Commissioner Von Neumann, yours is reducing vehicle speed citywide. So that becomes your focus, and you kind of lead the discussion on that item, and you work with Abe on how we're going to achieve that. Frankly, I think Abe's made some big strides on that one in the last uh, you know, couple of months and we've, we've voted on that item, but how do we further that and how do we make sure it's implemented? And if each commissioner had their thing and that were all you know, memorialized in our work plan and council blessed it, now at least we've got something that we can work on and say, we did ABC and XYZ in 2021, what are we gonna focus on in 2022? And, and that's, that was a nice thing about the environmental commission is, um, there weren't a lot of people coming to those meetings saying, we need this in our neighborhood. It was more, hey, we should consider banning plastic bags, you know, back in 2011. And we should consider, you know, getting rid of straws and we should consider, you know, getting rid of cigarette butts on the beach and that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, we drafted ordinances to that effect. I think we could do something similar on the traffic or on the Mobility and Traffic Safety Commission, MTSC. So um, unless others disagree, I think I think generally this discussion we've, Abe, you kind of summarized it pretty well. Um, I'll, I'll recommend uh, that we just move forward with your, uh, with your items one through five and make a motion that we support staff's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I will, I, will, I mean, uh, you're, you're welcome to to make a motion and, and approve this, uh, but I will come back with my actual council okay. agenda report to the commission to make sure the language that I'm putting in there, um, you know, the commission is um, is liking it. So, yeah, this is this is a bit general at the moment. I will I will mention every single code that will be changing the old language and the new language. Of, of the codes that will be modified. And then you can you can in detail read all those codes and all the changes, and then I'll take that to council. Okay, great. So do, do you want do you want a motion tonight or you don't need one? No, you can just, yeah, commission can just receive the report. That's fine. Okay, all right, great. Anybody else, any last uh, thoughts? It's me again, um, Commissioner Prendergast. I just want to thank you, Brian, for for clarifying that. Um, sure. How the Environmental Commission worked. I do think it's a great idea to maybe, you know, put down in writing what we see ourselves doing on a go forward basis. It gives everybody an opportunity to, you know, bring forward positivity and, and try to make change uh, rather than. But I do want to make sure that we just have the ability to react to the changes yep. that are necessary, such as Capri or, or such as um, Rancho Santa Fe Road, and, and just make sure that we have that ability within the guidelines. Uh, again, you know, we're not spending the money and the city council has to approve the cash to be spent on projects, but um, as long as we have that flexibility to maintain and, 
our outreach with the public is, is important. So thank you very much for clarifying that. And thank you, Abe. Okay. Um, so let's move on to item eight, follow-up log. Um, yes, Amanda, can you open the log? So item 31, um, on the log, the new crosswalks on, on San Alejo, we're a little bit behind on that one. Um, we have the uh, Verde location that uh, has the construction on that has not yet started. We, um, I did check with the CIP team. I'm gathering more information about that. Um, the Cornish one-way scenario, it did come up a few times, but um, again, one of those projects that is not funded, um, modeling that and evaluating the impact of that one-way conversion. Um, I am a little bit behind on this one, but I have to um, make sure this project um, is supported by council before um, spending more time and energy on it. Um, next item, uh, our standing mobility element update. Uh, we had this presentation from Jennifer. Um, they will um, regularly come to traffic commission and provide updates. I do believe at certain uh, milestones, they would require uh, major input from the traffic commission. Um, I will continue inviting her, but I do believe on their um, scope, there are certain stops at the traffic commission that they've already discussed with the consultant. Um, we did item 34. We did talk about our standing item on the cycle track. Um, the second phase of the cycle track, uh, more on that to come. Uh, within the next uh, meeting or two, we will talk about that and start uh, the launch of the design. Um, the citywide e-bike policy, another standing item. We had some updates. Um, I do like to... Um, I think uh, I think out of the members we have we have two of the members of the subcommittee here. Um, if you are in communication with the other members, uh, the goal I remember was for the members of the subcommittee to send me their ideas for a policy for the city. Um, I have not received any suggestions for that policy, um, but I'll continue working on it. Uh, hopefully soon we can have some sort of a city of Encinitas policy. Um, item thirty six. Um, the crosswalk evaluation at um, La Costa and Highway 101, this, if you recall, was the uh, possibility of um, a um, diagonal crossing and um, the possibility of uh, something similar to the scramble we have in downtown. It is, again, one of those cases where uh, the modeling would require around, I guess, 10 to 15K. And if um, it shows that it has merit, it would be another 30, 40, 35, 40 K to implement. So a $50,000 project, it's again, one of those cases where I'm kind of hesitant in hiring a consultant and having them model uh, the scramble effect and then go to council and find out it's not supported. Um, or we don't have the money to build it, even if it's supported by council. So it is a, it is a similar uh, situation, but um, I will continue working um, with the commission and I will update my um, director on these items um, because they seriously want to get a annual work plan from traffic um, for this year and the next year very, very soon. So I will try to incorporate all these um, log items that I feel are to the level that need to be included in that division's work plan. I will include all these and then come back to commission and provide you updates on these. Um, the crosswalk evaluations. So this is again, one of those cases, the evaluation is not costly. We can certainly uh, go check the physical characteristics, the potential for pedestrian crossing. Um, but um, as, as you all know how, how this commission feels about improving pedestrian safety, um, I'm pretty sure if we design something with a race crossing uh, marked um, continental crosswalk, shark teeth, RFBs, uh, even a med median refugee, uh, this will be uh, approved by the traffic commission. I'm going to bring the fish uh, in. How far we can go with funding such a thing at these um, locations is a different story. Um, again, the fact that this does not take as much of a 
um, resource from the from the staff compared to that modeling of the diagonal crossing, I will evaluate this and I will bring an item to the commission. Um, and then we'll go from there, I guess, uh, if we want to present it to council and see if council wants to fund those or not. Item number 39 on the low color roadway safety plan, a presentation was given to the commission last month or the month before. We will come back next month. And if they finish their modeling, they're presenting um, the findings about uh, the citywide evaluation of all the history of the collisions in the city, all the different types of collisions. Uh, so all their findings and all the evaluations they made for a holistic approach for a citywide Vision Zero inspired approach per se, they will be coming to commission in July and presenting a big item. Um, it's one of the major milestones in the study. If you recall in their presentation, they did mention this to commission that uh, certain stakeholders will be invited, commission will be in charge, they will be presenting their case and they will be um, providing all the different aspects of the study and the impacts on the different stakeholders. Um, so there will be a, a very involving meeting. I, I doubt that we will have another agenda item at our next meeting. Uh, the focus will be LRSP. I'm still waiting to see uh, the agenda they're presenting for that presentation. Um, but um, you'll, you'll, you'll see more when the agenda comes out. But the goal on that is to present the findings of their safety models to the traffic commission. Um, and um, item 40, the traffic evaluation at the Pacific Serena community. Um, Ian did a very good job of going out there, meeting with the residents, um, going over every single one of those items that were on that presentation. Um, he has some solutions. I'm not sure if we wanna have an agenda item on this. Uh, it's still not 100% completed, but I went out there with him and he went over his potential solutions with me. Uh, once the work orders go out and then the certain improvements that we think are beneficial happens, I will update the commission about the stuff that actually happened in the field. So that's my updates on the follow-up log chair. I'll open to questions if any. Okay, commissioners, any questions? Uh, Commissioner Von Neumann here. Yep, go ahead. Um, uh, on item number 38, uh, it's me, Crosswalk Michael here. Um, you know, when, when, when does the public, when, when would the public have a chance to, to weigh in on these crosswalks? Because if nobody, if, if, you know, what I'm trying to say is like, uh, uh, well, what am I trying to say? Basically, I think they're a good idea. I think they're good for traffic calming. Um, I, I think people would support it if they understood it. I just don't know how to, how the public even knows it's being discussed. Um, that is a good point. Um, you did see in the Municode, it considers the traffic commission as a liaison between public and the city council. Um, I guess the idea was these things could come from public and then um, be accepted by the traffic commission. In this case, that was initiated by the commission itself. I guess the path to notify public is a bit complicated. Um, we do have some policies in the city for CPPs, for community participation meetings, for certain development processes, but not for traffic items necessarily. So... Um, I, I don't have an actual policy to notify public when these things, I mean, I guess we're just assuming that public follow these commission meetings, the ones who are interested in safety, or if they contact us, obviously we'll tell them that there is such a thing in the works. But for us to, uh, I guess, proactively go out and notify the residents in the area that traffic commission is evaluating such a thing and it will be presented to commission at such and such date, there is no such policy in place at the moment. Okay. Well, that was one of the reasons why, uh, if you remember uh, a couple of months ago, I had wanted it to be on the uh, action, uh, be an action item. And because when the uh, agenda is posted and there's an action item, 
then the public can know, know that it's going to be discussed. And uh, that's why I, I was hoping it to be uh, an agenda item. Oh, so, this will be an agenda item. Eventually. Yes, on, on okay. the scheduled date that is July, which is which was next month. Again, um, I have two items on July. Um, however, I'm waiting for this um, LRSP uh, situation to be resolved in conversation with a consultant. And unfortunately, with Bob leaving the you know retiring, uh, I'm now the point person. So I'm trying to start a direct line of communication with the consultant to find out what they're expecting from this July meeting with the stakeholders at the commission. Um, if, I, if I have the uh, capacity at that meeting to have another agenda item, I will bring it to the commission. If not okay. at the future meeting, it will, it will be an agenda item. Okay, all right, thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Johnson. Okay, uh, I was under the impression that when we were gonna make changes that affected uh, nearby residents, we sent out a letter uh, for a 500 foot radius of these. Uh, would that uh, be enough for this? Um, I think the 500 feet, uh, or, or I'm not sure if it's 500 or some for CPP, that's for development projects. Yeah. There is no, there is no such a policy for traffic changes. As far as I know. Yeah, well, if residents are, accept, are uh, affected, uh, they ought to hear about it and have a chance to uh, uh, raise their concerns. That's just a thought. Yeah, uh, I, I can I can ask Amanda. I mean, Amanda is listening. We can certainly look into the Municode to see if there is such a code. I sure hope there's not, because that means we did 30 <laughs> different projects these past three years in town without I don't ask. conducting CPP meetings. I mean, luckily in the majority of those, the residents were involved, but to have a official CPP meeting to send mailers out and invite residents to an actual community meeting. I mean, the good thing, I mean, that our, our planning side has, you know, 20, 20 members there, the, the staff over there is way bigger. On our side, we only have three. Uh, Commissioner Prendergast, looks like you have a question. Yes, it's it's more of a procedural question to follow up on Commissioner von Neumann's question and the submittal for the sidewalk review uh, on item 38. So this is just me trying to understand the best process. So that, Abe, that was instigated by Commissioner von Neumann's request to have that reviewed. Is that different, is there a different process uh, bringing that to fruition or, or including that as an agenda item if it's submitted not as a commissioner but as a citizen and he would file a, a you know a, a letter or a piece of paper does that change the way the process of the procedure works it, this is more of a procedural question than it is anything um, I don't know how it works Sure, um, this, this would be a good question for our new commissioner too. So no, the, the process is not different. During the commissioner corner, um, it, it can be discussed even if it arrives from a member of public. Um, it can happen, the direction to the staff can happen during oral communication too. So if at that point the commissioner decides to support an, a topic and then has the support of um, I believe two or three uh, Amanda can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's two more. I, I don't mm -hmm. think we need the majority for that. If a topic is uh, supported by one commissioner uh, to go on this log or become a future agenda, and then the idea is supported by two other commissioners, it goes on the log and becomes a future agenda. Now, the difference is uh, when there is no member of public and the topic is brought by a commissioner, uh, the way we've been doing it is it still needs only two. It, it's not like it needs three other commissioners. So the way we've been doing it, if a topic is supported by three commissioners in general, it goes on this log. Okay. So going, um, so for instance, a couple commissions or a couple of meetings ago, there was the discussion on the 
side, uh, the four-way stop on Vulcan. And I'm not sure who brought it up, either the public or one of the commissioners. And it reached to a point where it went from the log to the agenda. And then we had a motion and recommended or approved the, the four-way stop. And then from there, you presented it uh, from our commission to the city council and they could either give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, right? Is that correct? the process? Okay. And then it got removed from the log, as you can see, it's not there anymore. Right, right. All right, thank you. What, what does it take to move, excuse me, I'm sorry, may I ask a follow-up question? Yeah, go ahead. So, so Abe, what does it take procedurally to move, for instance, we'll just take the crosswalk because that was the highlighted the conversation. So what does it take to, what did you have to do to move Michael's or Commissioner Von Neumann's sidewalk question on item 38 to an agenda item? Is that a vote from us? Well, that, that vote already is there. I wouldn't put okay, it on the you. log if the votes were not there. The I timing that I have in front of it is just Mike, Mike Kim's capacity. And yeah. it's kind of a floating but to thing. go on the log, but to go on the log requires, if I said, hey, let's um, put a roundabout at Cali Barcelona, you know, that, that okay. Thank it, you. It, so that's why we have the commissioner corner. And yeah, I, I have a strong feeling is two commissioners supporting uh, the first commissioner. So a total of three, but I can be wrong. Amanda, I don't know if you had the chance to look at it. I think it's two, but yeah, we can, that's, we can. Yeah, that's right. Too. I think it's always been two. For example, I'm I am going to request that the um, Capri intersection uh, at Burgundy be evaluated for a, a, a four-way stop, and I'll need two commissioners to agree with me to put that onto the the follow-up log. Thank you. That's correct. Okay. That's okay. correct. So my question is, do I have two commissioners to? Oh, sorry. <laughs> do that. <laughs> well, let's let's wait for the commissioner corner. Okay, <laughs> I want to move it along. It's well after eight o'clock. It's getting time to to get uh, some chair, dinner here. Chair, take us to corner. Okay, okay, <laughs> everybody's ready. Let's uh, let's move along to commissioner's corner. Okay, so Item right, nine. I'd like to put the the um, intersection at Bur Burgundy near Capri School on the log for evaluation for a four way stop. I'm I'm with you on that. That's one. I I'm I, I'm number two. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Thank you, Mary Lou. Um, just to to provide for those who um maybe followed this back in 2019. Uh, you know, I, I think Scott uh made reference to the article in the Coast News and the you know city taking no action, et cetera, et cetera. And Abe, I think when you first joined you sort of stepped into this, you know, pile of stuff that wasn't really organized, but we as a commission had been talking about Capri Elementary, safe routes to school, improving the safety of the intersection surrounding Capri Elementary, not just Capri and Burgundy, but but other other intersections as well. And there was a whole analysis. I think some of it stemmed out of the let's move Encinitas plan or something like that. And uh, I think this was, yeah, I'm pretty sure this was before you came, Abe. Um, we had talked about doing all these things. We voted on all those things. I don't know what, if they made it to council, but like one thing ended up happening. So I can totally understand why the, um, you know, neighbors in that area and parents whose children go to Capri Elementary are probably like, what the hell is going on? You know, <laughs> we've been talking about this forever. And uh, so it, it, Abe, it would be good to uh, just kind of close the loop on that and have clear messaging from the city. Hey, we've got it all figured out now. Here are the things that we're going to do. Here are the couple of things that we did in the last year or two. And here are the things that we're going to do now. Anyway, sure. we can talk about that when you bring it as a as an action item. But I just wanted to, I can... I, I, I sympathize with Scott's comments. It is frustrating. Okay, so that was one. Um, do we wanna talk about Gerald Kessler's comments about Melba and then Christine's comments about Lake? Anybody have thoughts on those? 
I thought we had talked about Lake in one of our prior uh, meetings, right? That we had talked about some traffic calming going down the hill to Birmingham. Um, Abe, did, did we, wasn't this a conversation about a couple of different streets and, and where we could do some work or some studies and, and down past the park and there, one of the traffic engineers made some presentations about different sections of Lake. Um, so I apologize if I don't recall. Trying to, um, was it recently? Um, I'll go I know back. we had a, Maybe I I'll think we had a speed limit item on Lake, right? Right. It, and there were some speed issues associated with it. We talked about the speed limits on Lake um, down past the park. Uh, I'll go back and look at some of my notes um, on that and, and maybe deal with, uh, send you an email or something. Sorry about that. Um, other commissioners, do we want to do we want to add these to our log? Something about lake and traffic calming on lake. And I, I think uh, Christine sent a follow up email to us. Um, thought she did. Yeah, she did with her specific request. Um, anyway. There. I'll raise my hand again. Um, there was also another communication from Rachel De La Vega regarding Double L Road in Levenheim and the yes. detour and the associated um, problems that we're having back here uh, with the sewer. Uh, I guess I'd like to, I'm not sure in looking at her, her questions, um, I would like to know if there's a reason why the gates are closed at 4 p.m. Um, which was her number four, that's kind of popped up. And I would like to know if in fact, you know, our understanding back here in this community is that the Sheriff's Department does not have a key. And the only people that have a key to open that gate is the fire department. And the concern that the neighbors have is, hey, if the fire department is off fighting a fire in Ramona or Campo and we can't get the gate open, that's a real problem for us. So um, I, I would like to um, discuss this or, or maybe get some clarifications uh, by our, in our next meeting. I don't know what I'd say, supposed to say there, but. I can, I can sure gather some information. Um, I do believe that this came up a month or two ago and when we checked this, that whole area is a private road and a private um, property. So it's not a public road. I think the whole uh, area that that gate that was there or or it was discussed. I don't think it's on a public right of way. Um, but I can certainly uh, follow up on a uh, not not a, not on a traffic commission agenda, but on a uh, private conversation. We can talk about it, and I can involve our fire chief, and we can talk about it more. Yeah, I, I think it's 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 identified on Lone Jack as the evacuation route. So um, the gate at Double L opens, I'm talking about the gate between Cali Margarita and Paseo Esmeralda in the city of Carlsbad. And there is a, uh, an access road that is opened in case of emergencies um, because that would limit from a, fire, from a safety standpoint, um, access by fire trucks and paramedics um, if, for instance, there's work on Lone Jack like there is right now, and we can't get out, so um, maybe yeah, just I am, yeah, I am familiar with yeah, familiar with that gate. I actually been there. I think before the pandemic, I went out there right to that gate with a few of our engineers. Okay. That that is a private area. I don't I don't think city has any right of way over there. There's just I, I guess a safe fire easement or something. Um, all right. Well, maybe we'll take we'll take that up offline, and maybe if it's still an yeah. issue, we'll bring it back up um, sure. at the commissioner's corner next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I I've heard of those issues from several residents over the past month or so. That when that work is being done on Lone Jack, um, people are stuck for forty five minutes, an hour, trying to just get out of their community. So it sounds yeah. like a real issue. 
Yeah, you know, it, it is. Um, I'll take it up with council member Mosca. Clearly he's aware of it. Um, having, having lived back, he lived back here with us. So, um, you know, if there's ever an issue we're we're really kind of stuck. Um, so that's a traffic and safety issue. Yeah. Okay. Or mobility. I'm sorry, mobility issue. And then we had a, we had a couple of other emails that Amanda had sent over. So you just mentioned the one from Rachel. We had one from Angie Gernhardt, which was also about Capri Elementary and safety surrounding the school. And then we had one from Stacy Tyree, uh, also about Capri Elementary, Burgundy, et cetera. Um, so anyway, with all of that, do we wanna add anything else to the follow-up log um, besides what we just added at Capri? Sounds like no. Uh, you're okay. muted, Michael. Oh, Commissioner Von Neumann. Okay. Um, regarding the Capri, um, I, 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 I would hope that the analysis or looking at it would be, would not just include a four-way stop, but other possibility uh, things that could be done to make the intersection safer, like putting in bulb outs at the intersection that would cause uh, automobiles to have to go slow around a corner, you know, not just a four-way stop, but what other things can be done to slow the traffic down. Okay. Oh, sorry. And, and then there was also, I don't know if anybody wanted to add um, the traffic issues on Melba that, that Gerald Kessler had raised related to, I think, existing traffic and then it being exacerbated by a, a development project in that area. Does anybody have thoughts on that? I want to add it. I do believe we recently collected some speed data there on Melba. Um, that is specific concern, the way I heard it, it's more about more like a planning commission concern. Than okay. Mobility and traffic safety commission. Okay, fair Back enough. Phrase, <laughs> okay, that all sounds good. Um, we we kind of glossed over this at the beginning, but uh, I wanted to give our new commissioner, Patricia, a, a better chance. Sorry, we just threw you right in, but a, a better chance to introduce yourself. And um, you don't have to, but just take a couple of minutes and tell us uh, what you're interested in and uh, or, or not. Just wanted to welcome you to the commission and uh, give you a couple of minutes here. Yeah, so um, I was just informally talking a little bit before the meeting started. Um, so uh, I was just mentioning I've been a, a long resident, about 25 years here in Cardiff, and um, you know, uh, raised our kids here, and they're grown up now. And you know, I have a little bit more time to myself, so um, you know, I wanted to get involved. Um, you know, this past year with the pandemic and everything, when they started closing the beach and they closed, you know, the parks, it, it, it was amazing. I'm sure you definitely noticed, but a lot of people were using those roads and, you know, it just really made me realize how important they are to the community. So, um, so anyhow, um, and then my background is, is um, kind of related. So I'm a certified planner. Um, I'm a licensed landscape architect and I'm a lead uh, accredited professional. So I've been doing a lot of work um, at the airport. So, um, you know, there's always a lot of issues, um, traffic safety issues you're dealing with, you know, just to um, keep people safe while they're, you know, stressed and trying to um, make it on a flight. So um, anyhow, so I'm, I'm excited about being on the, on the commission. Great. Well, welcome. Yeah, we're excited to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Well, I think everybody's about ready for uh, adjournment here at 815. What do you say? Motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Uh, I, I had a question. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm sorry. Commissioner Motion Von Motion not Newman. seconded. <laughs> I didn't hear a second before Commissioner Von Neumann said he had a question. Go ahead, okay, Go ahead. Okay. Yep. For Excellent. Commissioner Corner, at the last city council meeting, when Abe presented the Vulcan and Santa Lijo interim improvements, there was a question and some comments uh, regarding uh, the installation of thermoplastic pavement legends. 
And I just, Abe, I, what is your takeaway from that meeting? Did the cat was the council directing uh, not to have thermoplastic, or what's your understanding from that meeting? Um, I'm not sure if we got a clear direction not to do so. However, we are meeting with our public works direct director this Thursday. Uh, our director, the public works director, our street superintendent, and myself, uh, and our acting city engineer, we are meeting with public works to go over this concern and hopefully we'll have a resolution. Our public works director, our, our interim public works director has expressed interest in now that this is what council likes, I am willing to take it on. And if it involves asking for more budget for maintenance or more resources, I am okay with asking council uh, for more, but he's receptive to the idea of not doing thermo anymore. Okay, well, th well, thank you. And, uh, you know, obviously part of the discussion has to be the fact that thermoplastic is much more expensive to apply and may perhaps that offset some of the maintenance uh, costs in the future. That is correct. Yeah, they are, they are, they are aware. I mean, obviously they are the ones who are doing it. Their concern is the, the fact that they have to revisit the roads in the five to seven to 10 years that the thermo stays five or seven times refreshing the paint there every time involves contracting every time involves inspection so their concern is more staff time than money itself although their basic they sent us a simple calculation uh, with their calculation even though the initial cost of thermal is way higher on the long run thermal becomes cheaper okay but, uh, but then again uh, we're, the cost is not the only issue here we know that our community doesn't want thermal and we know our council's preference is not to use thermo. So our, our interim director has said he is uh, willing to make it happen. So we're meeting to discuss it. Okay, well, thank you. I'll keep my fingers crossed. We don't, we don't need additional hazards to people using bicycles on our roads. Thank you. We adjourn. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, we've got a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second now? Commissioner Von Newman will second. Commissioner Von Newman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you very Bye. much.